Chat. Don't get dogs. Don't have dogs, chat. Chat, listen, 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 listen. Don't have dogs. It's not worth it. It's not worth it, everybody. I have been working all day to clean up just awful mess. Don't have dogs. Uh, good to see everybody today. Ms. Cordelia Chesterfield says, at work and can't stay. Don't forget, Hyla to the Pilgrim's Rest. The locked room in the back. And look at the drawings on the wall. Thanks for the great stream and fantastic community. Dear God, you're having me take notes already. It hasn't even begun. And I have to take notes. Okay. All right, here's my notes from last time. The space station at Alpha Centauri. Let's try Hyla 2. Hyla 2, Pilgrim's Rest. And that was a locked room in the back. Look at drawings on wall. Thank you, Ms. Cordelia Chesterfield. Kara Aerosmith with a super tip. Thank you so much, Kara Aerosmith. Okay. Now I need to test something really quickly. Give me just a second. Dear God, why do I have so many tabs open? Let's try this. Is it not working? Wow. Okay. So I'm I'm attempting, I'm attempting to go live on Twitch. It's been a, a couple of years since I've been live on Twitch, and uh, my connection may not be updated. It's okay. We'll get through this together, at some point. All right, it's not working. Looks like I'm not. Huh. All right, well, I'm using a third-party software to try and uh, sync my connection with Twitch, and it looks like I'm not live, but I thought I would be. I should be live on Facebook. Let me go try that. Did it not work? I am live on YouTube. Oh. Never mind. Never mind. I figured it out. See, this is just... God. All right, like I was saying. Like I was saying, chat. Dogs. Don't have dogs. They make you forget the very basics of, of streaming on the internet. Alt Grendel says, I have no idea what's going on. That's okay. I didn't have any idea what was going on either until just a moment ago when I figured it out. Anyway, I'm live. I'm live on YouTube. That's what matters. Here we are, and we're ready for a new broadcast. I've got my notes. I've got the chat. Free uh, Nagan says, Leo, up the great work. I believe he meant to keep up the great work. Thank you very much, Free Nagan. Good to have you on the program today. Thank you, Kara Aerosmith, as well. So, my dogs... Uh, Ad Admiral is getting better. Admiral is getting better. But whatever Admiral had, Grits caught. And now Grits is going through this cycle of just awfulness. Um, yeah, but the thing is, uh, Grits is an Aussie. He's an Aussie Terrier, and anyone who has, or not Terrier, um, Shepherd, Aussie Shepherd. He's an Aussie Shepherd, and anyone who has ever had Australian Shepherds knows that they're extremely high energy. 
And that's what he is. He's he's extremely high energy. And that's it's a very polite way of saying that he's bats not crazy. He's just He's just a crazy, crazy dog. Do you know that he began to eat my house? He has begun to eat my house. When I put him outside, he gnaws on my door. When he's inside, he gnaws. I, I'm telling the truth. When he's inside, <laughs> when he's inside, he gnaws at the baseboards of my house. And I've got this kennel that I put him in at night to protect the house. Because otherwise he will eat it. He will eat the house. And I have him in this kennel and he's gotten used to it and he goes into his kennel at night and he sleeps. And there's a lid, right? But he's been sick. And I feel so bad, it's not his fault. You know, I've been cleaning him up. I went, I went to the grocery store and I got some diapers. Not really diapers, they're Depends. So it was really awkward. I'm standing in line, you know, a 42-year-old man with a big, you know, package of Depends. And uh, it's got this old Asian guy on the cover. They were small size for small hips, and I'm not a small guy. And the, the checkout person's just looking at the small Asian guy on the cover and then looking at me, and it wasn't matching. Um, so I got some very strange looks. But I, I got, anyway, I got the Depends, but they weren't from me. They were for the dogs, right? Because the dogs have just blowout. And so I put them on the dogs and it works great for Admiral because Admiral's a good boy. But Grits? Grits is bats not crazy. I put the diaper that depends on him and the first night he just tears it to shreds. The second night he pulls it off, poop and all, and then just start stepping on it and pushing it around and it goes in the corner. It squishes out of the kennel and everywhere. And there's this lid that, that goes over the top of the kennel. And it doesn't have a latch because of course it doesn't have a latch. The designers of this kennel were such geniuses that they decided to put a little movable lid on it that doesn't have a latch. And so he pushes it open and jumps out of the kennel. I've tried weighing it down. I had this big thing of like, uh, 48 cans of Diet Coke and I would put that on top. He pushes it off and just leaps out of the kennel. Well, I was sleeping this morning and my son was getting ready for school and he, in his wisdom, decided to keep the dog in the kennel and weigh it down by putting a ceramic pumpkin decoration on top. A ceramic pumpkin decoration. So, of course, it shatters all over the floor when Grits bops out with his nose first, boing, crash against the wall, poop flying out the bottom, he jumps up, diaper falls off, madness. This has been my morning, guys. This has been my morning. I'm gonna get vices. I have these vices in the garage that I can use to clamp the lid down so that he can't jump out and spray poop all over my living room. I've been cleaning. Oh my God, I've been cleaning. I've washed my hands like five times. The, like these purple gloves, my, I think they're leaking latex or something. I've got purple tints on my hands. My hands are dry from the 409. <sighs> but you know what? Uh, I'm here. I'm here and I've got my coffee and I've got my cigar and I'm okay. I'm really okay. It might not sound of it, but I, I'm okay. Anyway, where were we? Paladin Dance's girlfriend says, Happy Halloween. What are you dressing up as about the dogs? Can you make a gated dog run for potty areas? I mean, when, I'm, when they're outside, they're fine. I have... <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting texts. My family knows what I've been going through with these dogs, and I think some of them are watching right now, and so I'm getting texts. I'm, I, <laughs> I'm getting responses from some of my family to, to what, what I'm going through right now on, on the channel. Anyway, what? so the dog, uh, when they're outside, it's fine. I've got a fenced-in lot, so they can't get out. So I let them outside. They've got 
this beautiful big grassy area that they can run around in and do their potties and all of that. I mean, it's nighttime that's the problem because they have diarrhea and they can't help going to the bathroom. It's not their fault, they're sick, right? So, I, you know, I'm not gonna get all angry at them or anything, but I also can't leave them outside all night because it's cold, it's November, almost November. So they have to come in because it's warm, but I can't let them have their run of the living room. So I put them in the kennel and they just, just it's everything I've said. Anyway, Paladin Dance's girlfriend, happy Halloween. I'm not dressing up. It's been a long time since I've dressed up, but my kids are dressing up. My daughter is going as a little devil. She, she got some devil horns and she's got a little devil tail and she's so excited. She's just, I'm just so excited. My son is going as the Scream guy. He's never seen any of the Scream movies, but he likes anything that has moving parts. And this particular Scream mask has like a heart-shaped rubber pump connected to a pouch filled with fake blood that connects to the Scream. And you squeeze it and then blood trickles down the face and then it gets recycled and goes back into the system and it's just blood. Oh, he thinks that's amazing. So he's gonna be a Scream guy with a big bloody face and they're both excited for tonight. I'm, I'm just gonna be in the thickest clothing possible because it's cold. I've, I'm already cold. It's gonna be cold tonight. But they're both really excited for, for Halloween. Greg Williams says, why did Billy get fired from the banana factory? Because he kept throwing away the bent ones. Also, uh, is the Wasteland Wanderer's Guide the worst quest? <laughs> I don't know if it's the worst quest. There's definitely something about Moira Brown that makes her a tad endearing. Um, but, you know, it's not the best quest. Darth Luke says, "Hope uh, sounds crappy. Hope it gets better. I mean, it is literally crappy. And I hope it gets better, too. I think... I think Admiral is on the healing end. Like, he's starting to get better. His stool is solidifying a bit. I took them both to the vet, of course, over the weekend. And um, doctors said that, you know, there's no parasites. They tested for parasites. They don't think there's any crazy bacteria. They think it's just a bug. Just, I guess dogs can get them at flu season, too. I, I don't know. I mean, so far, everyone in the household is fine. But the dogs ended up catching some sort of seasonal bug. Of which I've never heard of before. Anyway, so they, they had no no medication. They just said, keep them hydrated. And they gave them some anti-nausea medication so they don't, you know, vomit up their food. And um, Admiral just didn't want to eat. Grits would eat anything. He, he doesn't have a problem with eating. But Admiral is a very picky, you know, sensitive dog. And he didn't want to eat. So they gave him uh, some medication to encourage him to eat. And we got some probiotics. We've got both the dogs on probiotics. It's crazy because they've got these very special diets, which is, I'm, I've got, you know, shredded chicken. And then we've got the cooked rice. And then we've got the cottage cheese with a little bit of kibble mixed in. And then the probiotics sprinkled on top. I feel like I'm in a crazy TikTok dog chef video. It's, it's insane. But it's temporary. Man of Warb says, I've decided to do a Cyberpunk Corpo playthrough in order to get in the right mood for doing the Ryujin questline in Starfield. Well, the two certainly align. That'll keep you, uh, keep you in the right frame of mind for, uh, mind for the Ryujin questline. Hunter says, uh, hi chat, DM was hoping for more Alan Wake. You know, I almost played Alan Wake today. I am so just having a great time with Alan Wake. It's such a good game and the storytelling is phenomenal. And I'm incredibly intrigued. Um, and yet at the same time, I wanna finish Starfield. Like there's so much more in Starfield that I wanna get out of it. Uh, and uh, you know, we need to get back to Baldur's. There's just so much to do and so little time. I don't know if I should just pause and just play Alan Wake until it's done. But we've been playing Starfield every week for all, over a month now and I'm still not done with it. So anyway, uh, it's hard to figure out how to best balance this out. But we're all having a good time, and I'm glad you're here. And today, it's time for a little Starfield. Anna S. says, regarding uh, claims that you're an old man gamer, not so! You're an Oxogenarian. 
which makes you timeless. Well, thank you, Anna. I'm gonna go and say, that's a good thing. We'll go ahead and just, that's, yeah. I'm an ox something or other, and that makes me timeless. Extremely kind, Anna. Thank you so much. Greg Williams says, ox sounds like a long shower while repeating, it won't come off, it won't come off kind of day lol hope your day gets better my friend <laughs> it's getting better now it's getting better now i've got my coffee i've got my cigars i've got the chat and we're we're good to go nap at this point. It's only 11 o'clock. It's only 11 o'clock and I could nap. Anna S. says, it's a play on words with octogenarian super dad joke. No, I, I got it. Yes, og... I, I guess I was confused as why you went octogenarian instead of oxygenarian. Ox... Ogenarian. Ox... I get it, because octo is eight, as in the 80s, generic, ox, o -generian. That makes sense. They, it, it, it's perfect. I love it, Anna. It's a great dad joke. Happy Halloween, everybody. Hope you have wonderful plans for tonight. Let's dive in and pick up right where we left off. Now, I uh, was working on lore videos over the weekend, so that ruined my auto saves. Thankfully, I have a hard save here. Six days, eight hours. I think that's it. Tony J says, Octo means eight and Ox is in his 40s. Oxhorn is a semi-octogenarian? <laughs> I suppose so. Now. Oh, come on. Why is this? My, my, my boom is messing up. Glass of my cases in the way. There we go. Man of Warb says, What was the worst decision you've ever made in a game? One that uh, stuck with you and didn't load an old save to undo? That's easy. It was when I was playing Detroit Become Human. And it was a freaking quick time event. I was trying to save the life at the very end of the game of what's her name? I mean, they were, uh, all of the androids were stripped naked and they were in the android processing facility and she had the little girl android in her hands and they were escaping and they were trying to save their lives and it was quick time event and I pass it and it was quick time event and I pass it and it was quick time event and I fail it and they die. Both of them. The game kills the kid and the girl. I was, and I didn't reload a save. I was so depressed after that. I just, I beat the game and I didn't go back. I was so sad. But yeah, Detroit Become Human was a fascinating game. You can watch that gameplay. I've got it live on my YouTube channel. But spoiler alert, the kid dies at the end in my gameplay. <laughs> I was really bummed. Okay, um... So there was something that I missed, actually. Uh, when I was doing my... I'm working on a lore video about Earth, and so I actually was recording some footage in preparation for that. In so doing, I was researching the different bobbleheads... I'm sorry, not bobbleheads. Snow globes you can get at the NASA facility. And we actually got everything inside the facility. And we got the one at the top of the tower. But there was one that we missed further down. 
Funnily enough, it was in a room that we previously unlocked. So I just want to find it really quickly. And then we'll go and meet the hunter. And what's his name? It was a room that was locked with an advanced lock. And this entire thing is just an absolute maze. I... I'm going to be surprised if I find it again. Uh, Darth Luke says, can't wait to see your decision. I finished the game. It's unique. By the way, I love your videos. I'm so happy to catch a live stream. Thank you, Darth Luke. I'm glad you're here. Alt Grendel says, actually, playing Starfield is probably better than playing Alan Wake. You can take your frustrations out on the Crimson Fleet. This is true. And Lord knows I've had a frustrating morning. Okay. Oh. Oh, come on. Need a moment to walk that off? Please. I don't want another freaking sprained ankle. This game, I'm always spraining my ankles. I just don't know which floor it is. Is it this floor? Is it the one right above me? Is it the one right below me? All right, I'm going to try. I'm going to try up one more. If I can get there. That's where I came from, though. But it's not on the ground floor. <clears throat> Maybe it was uh, uh, one floor above where I was? It's a big room locked with an, ad with an advanced lock, and I actually already unlocked it. I just didn't see the snow globe when I explored the room in that episode, or maybe it was over there? Yeah, the complication is that there are two sections to this. Okay, I'm thinking it's over there. <laughs> Joe says, ha uh, hi Ox, happy Halloween to you and yours. Thank you very much, Joe. Happy Halloween to you and yours as well. Wait, that's where I was. That's, that's the one I came up in. Less talking, more focusing. I don't believe it was this room. On, ah, ah, here it is. It is this room. And there it is. It's on the desk with an American flag on the wall behind it. And there it is. It's actually a duplicate of um, a snow globe that we find inside. There you go. And that should give me all four snow globes that I can find here. Twitter. Oh, crap. I knew I forgot to do something. Yeah, let me announce it on Twitter really quickly. Twitter should now know. 
<clears throat> I'm in the process of trying to reactivate things. I thought I had done it correctly this morning, which is why I thought I was live on Twitch and Facebook, but I'm not. It's okay, I just got a few more buttons and levers to pull, and then things should be back to normal. Project Journeyman says, three strokes and a heart attack, still going strong. Project Journeyman, you are one of the lucky ones. Awesome to have you here today. Uh, and that was Project Journeyman's first super chat. Thank you so much, Project Journeyman. Okay, let's go. Do you understand now why I asked you to come here? The artifacts unlock the secret of interstellar travel at the cost of Earth. An easy trade, honestly. Why have one world when you can have all the settled systems? Um, okay, <clears throat> so, well, we definitely learned in the last broadcast exactly what happened. It's a huge plot spoiler, so I hope you watched the last Starfield broadcast before continuing on. I still don't quite understand what I found. Can you explain? Every grab drive in the settled systems was built on technology that came from an artifact that was discovered on Mars. But these early drives shook the gravity field surrounding Earth. Eventually, the atmosphere started to slowly sputter away into space. That's why Earth is uninhabitable. The artifact gave the scientists a greater understanding of time and space, but not the wisdom to see where that would lead. The settled systems wouldn't exist without the artifacts, in other words. We owe what happened here in NASA a great debt. We could say, I agree, humanity's destiny was the stars anyway. Or sacrificing Earth wasn't worth having grab drives. We lost our home. Um, I guess my concern is that, yeah, we did lose our home, but we would have lost it anyway. Like, the Earth is destined to be destroyed at some point anyway, either by but something that we do or um you know when the earth goes or the, when the sun goes um and turns into a red giant but still that's not for millions and millions of years this is a tough one because uh sacrificing earth is no small sacrifice it's the uh, the starting point of all intelligent life in the settled systems as far as we know and yeah, what's interesting about this is we now have the answer to the Starborn. We know that the Starborn are just humans who managed to get to the Unity, but they're not the ones who created the artifacts. So who created the artifacts? Um, let's try. I agree. Humanity's destiny was the stars anyway. Don't you see? The power of the artifacts forced humanity to the stars. They didn't get to make a choice. How many would have chosen Earth? And what gave Victor Isa the right to choose for them? You see the hypocrisy in what the Emissary is saying, right? They don't want to rob people of their free will, but then they steal the artifacts for themselves. In the wrong hands, the power of the artifacts can make anyone a tyrant. That's why we watch over them. The only thing you're watching out for is yourself. Who's we? Is uh, the emissary part of some sort of starborn government group community? Julian Z says, "Hi Ox, good to see you on Starfield Tuesday." Sorry I'm late. No worries, Julian Z. Good to see you as well. We could say the emissary is right. The artifacts need to be in the right hands. We could say the hunter is right. The only real rule is who gets all the artifacts first. Or we could say you're both wrong. It's time someone other than a Starborn made a decision. <laughs> a 
I mean, the last option is really not smart because ultimately, as the the player character, we are other than Starborn, and we are going to make the decision. But this dialogue option isn't telling us what the consequences are for choosing this option. I mean, even if we choose one and two, we're still ultimately choosing three because we're the ones making a decision. I guess that means that we're not really siding with anyone right now. Now, the, the thing about uh, choosing between the emissary and the hunter is, I think, a pretty straightforward choice. Now, the hunter has a very compelling argument. Because we are living in Groundhog Day. We are living in a, 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 a multiverse where every single universe is just layered on top of another universe. And so it ultimately doesn't matter who you have to kill to get to the artifact. Because at the end, you find the unity, you pop back into a universe, and there everybody's still alive again. Rinse and repeat over and over, time and time again. And the value of life can feel diluted because you keep seeing the same people over and over again. No one is unique anymore. Life no longer has you know, a finite value. So I get where the hunter is coming from. The problem is that the Barrett of this universe is not the Barrett of the last universe or the one before that. They may be all Barrett, but they're e each individually unique instances of Barrett. Their lives are finite and unique. Even though there are multiple Barretts throughout all of the multiverse, each one has a different personality, and they make slightly different changes, and there are different quirks about each one. They're all unique in their own way, and they're valuable. And that's what the, MS uh, that's what the hunter doesn't get. He is so full of his own power and full of the dream of what he could become and um, inflated with his own self-worth due to his power that he has forgotten the humanity of everyone below him, right? What is it that people complain about God? If God is so uh, omnipresent and all-powerful, why doesn't he stop tragedies from happening? Why doesn't he stop uh, atrocities from happening, right? How could a good God let all of these awful things happen? Here we have a hunter who could essentially be a God. He sees himself as one. He is extremely powerful, and he makes life and death, choice, uh, death choices uh, over people all, all throughout time and space throughout many different universes throughout history. He sees himself as a godlike creature and he doesn't care about people, right? So that's how easily someone, even someone who was formerly human, could slip into the mindset of being above humanity and therefore not valuing life. A good starborn who still wants to hunt the artifacts and find the unity would still value the life of each individual person in each universe he goes through, even if it costs him time, even if it means that he's got to sit through conversations and negotiations that he has sat through time and time again throughout history in each universe in order to get to the universe while still respecting life. Um, the question is, does the emissary do that? The hunter clearly doesn't. The hunter is in it for himself. The powerful is the one that wins, yada, yada, yada. A, a time old philosophy that has been the ruination of so many great societies already. Uh, the emissary, however, uh, we don't know anything about the way that he judges who is able to be the right hands. And that's the problem. It's what the game isn't telling us. Okay, so we agree that we should respect human life and therefore the artifacts need to be um, kept only for those who also respect human life. But wh what is this great council of Starborn that makes this decision? Is it just the emissary? Is there a great council of Starborn? Or is every Starborn just a nomad who goes throughout time and space? And like we don't have that answer yet. So I feel like we're not really given enough information to make a reasonable choice here.
Yes, man! So for the moment, for lack of a better option, I'm going to choose... The emissary is right. The artifacts need to be in the right hands. Join me, old friend. We can collect the final pieces together. Oh, no, you don't. You're not his old friend, remember? You're from another universe. Don't yeah. try to manipulate He's clearly him. trying to manipulate me. Okay. I couldn't win you over on philosophy. How about pragmatism? I'm more powerful than the emissary. Than any other starborn. And you might not understand why, but I want you to succeed. You've never gotten this far before. I need to see what happens to you. The Hunter is working really hard to win me over. For somebody who just cares about power, uh, so I'm a little... I'm a little conflicted here now. Uh, Caden Shade says, I'm looking to sell a vintage DeLorean. Good condition, low miles. Only been driven from time to time. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you, Caden Shade. Blue Thunder says, You know what's funny? Starborn mentioned the word unity. It's the same words from the first Fallout where you face the master, leader of the super mutant. Yeah, I noticed that. I mentioned that uh, uh, towards the beginning of um, uh, our playthrough when we first started hearing about unity. We're running around asking people, Do you know what the unity is? Yada, yada, yada. I'm like, Oh, the master does. The master from Fallout sure does. Um, chat says that I'm overthinking it. <laughs> Da'e says, who killed your friend, Ox? Yeah, uh, I, am I overthinking it? So the hunter killed my friend. Obviously, I've got some revenge plotted for that. Darth Luke says, depends on what weapon you want. Well, okay, but that's not information that they want to give us at this point because they don't want us to make the choice based on the weapon that we get. They want us to make the choice based on philosophy. Now they want us to make the choice based on pragmatism. And yet we only have the hunter's word to go by. He claims to be the most powerful opponent. He claims that the emissary is trying to manipulate us. And the emissary is, he's using words like old friend, trying to, you know, um, get chummy with us, even though we don't know him. He has the face of Barrett, but he is not Barrett. So he is clearly trying to manipulate us, which is a version of lying in and of itself, which means that he can't be trusted. So yeah, I'm just frustrated by all of the options that we have, the way that this has been implemented. I'm not exactly pleased. Uh, I, we could say I'm siding with the emissary. An alliance with the hunter seems like the winning strategy. I'm tired of both of you. I'll get the unity on my own. Well, we've got a hard save directly before this choice. I'm tempted to say I'm tired of both of you. I'll get the unity on my own. But the hunter killed Barrett. I valued Barrett's life. I knew Barrett. I liked Barrett. And the hunter killed him anyway. The hunter didn't value Barrett's life. Barrett was just in his way. For this playthrough, at least, I'm siding with the emissary. We'll see what happens. Thank you. Well, can't say I didn't try. We'll settle this at the usual place. The Barrett Temple. We'll be there. You're lucky I'm a man of my word. I'll see you there. Stay for a moment. You must have questions about what happens next. We won't be able to go to the buried temple right away. There are still other artifacts out there in the settled systems that haven't been gathered. You'll need to work with your colleagues in Constellation to find them. I have to say that the Hunter is a much more interesting character. I kind of want to side with him just to see what it's like to work side by side with, with, a, with a personality like that. 
But he's a murderer, and he's full of himself. V says, the emissary tried to kill you in orbit around Voli. Don't forget that. That's true. He did. And he did kill me, actually. The first time he appeared, I died. And I had to reload a save and then grab, jump away to get away from him. Um, the thing is, there were... And it's weird saying this, because it ultimately doesn't matter, but there were two very different motivations. He killed me and everyone aboard my ship to prevent me from getting the artifact. The hunter killed Barrett and attacked everyone at Constellation to get the artifact for himself. It was after... But the thing is, bo once both of them realized that there was something special about my character that history wasn't repeating itself the same way it always had, both of them stopped. The hunter as well. So even though I'm kind of pissed at them both at this point, ultimately, uh, the hunter's philosophy is not something that I can sympathize with because he's just a glutton. He's a glutton for the artifacts. He wants to consume as many of them as possible and he doesn't care who he has to destroy to do so. The Emissary, to my knowledge, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but so far seems to be a little bit more um, cautious about how he goes about getting the artifacts. So maybe it was a bad decision, but we'll see as we continue. What's the buried temple? There's always a final artifact in a specific temple. The hunter and I agreed that whoever you sided with, the other would wait there. Expect anything and everything. Other starborn, human mercenaries and defenses, alien creatures under mind control. It's all fair game. What? Why would the United Colonies be using... Uh, Project Pet Shop to mind control creatures to protect an artifact in a temple. Why would anyone other than Starborn be trying to keep us from getting to a temple? Why are other Starborn working with the Hunter again? I thought every Starborn was in it for themselves. Why are we waiting? We could say, couldn't we attack the Hunter now? He and I made a number of agreements over the years. If you can even call them years at this point. We let him go. In exchange, he'll wait at the buried temple. You'll be able to prepare any way you can before then. Will you be coming with me? I'll meet you in orbit above the buried temple. We'll face what's there together. Why can't we go to the buried temple right away? All of the other artifacts need to be gathered before the final one will reveal itself. I'll be bringing mine. The hunter will be bringing his. And you'll need to bring the rest. All the ones Constellation can find. So wait a minute. If we're going to step into the Unity, won't we need the Emissary's artifacts as well? Presumably he would need ours to get into the Unity as well. Does that mean we're destined to betray each other? Rachel says, hey, hopping in late. Did you really break down and buy some Starfield props? I did. No thanks to you. She's in my Twitter feed, sending me links to Etsy stuff. Chunks, little chunks packages. There's a little digipic, a 3D print, a printed and painted digipic. She sends them to me and she's like, oh, hope you don't get tempted to buy these. And then she has the audacity to come in a chat and say, did you end up buying them? Of course I did, Rachel, because you saw, I saw them in the stream in my Twitter feed. And they looked amazing, and I had to get them. Don't know where I'm going to put them, because I don't have any more room in my office. So, thanks. So selfish. Okay. Tell me what you need. Right, I've got two skill points, and I believe I was trying to work on outpost engineering. I could upgrade that. 
planetary habitation, special projects. A a neuronic fusion? Ship reactors. Okay. You have a 10% chance to discover a trait when scanning. I don't understand how they expect me to get through all of these different perks if the game just repeats itself and everything gets erased. All your progress gets erased in New Game Plus. But perhaps I'm speaking from ignorance as I haven't gotten there yet. All right, well, I probably need outpost engineering and planetary habitation. Superior outpost modules, cutting edge outpost modules. Outpost modules now cost fewer resources. Or on planets with extreme pressure. Increases the maximum number of outposts you can build by eight. I'm gonna need this. Build habitable outposts on three different planets. I've gotten two of three, so I can't get this just yet. Darth Luke says you get to keep all of your perks and your level. Oh, do I? Oh, that, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Darth Luke. Caden Shade says, way I see it, the hunter is in it for power and fun. The emissary is the one playing God by choosing who can enter. Both use force, but one is honest. I have to admit that the Emissary was being a little bit dishonest in his attempts to manipulate me by saying things like old friend, etc, etc. However, I think that focusing on... The problem is that you're saying both are using force, but one is honest. Honesty is irrelevant, right? Even the force is irrelevant. It's what one is using that force to do. The emissary was using force to attack only people who were hunting the artifacts to make sure the artifacts didn't get into the wrong hands. The hunter is hunting anyone who gets in his way. He went into New Atlantis and went on a murderous rampage trying to get to Constellation to get the artifacts. How many dozens of people did he kill in New Atlantis during that rampage? He killed more than just Barrett. He killed a lot of UC security and a lot of civilians as well, right? The only person the emissary ever attacked was us because we had a bunch of artifacts and we were actively hunt hunting them. There's a distinction between the two. Yes, the hunter is doing it for power and for fun, but he doesn't care about human life and he will destroy any human life that gets in his way, even if his motivations are for power and fun. The emissary recognizes that human life is sacred and valuable and unique and needs to be preserved no matter which universe it's in. And so he's attacking people who go after the artifacts to prevent another hunter from being created so that he can maximize protecting as much human life as possible. The motivations are very different. Sure, both are playing God. When we become a starborn, maybe we'll play God too, but what they're doing with their force is different. Honesty is irrelevant. It's how they use their power that's relevant. Rachel says, no prob. Don't worry. I'll keep you updated with more. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rachel. You're so kind. James Trucker says, if you really want something awesome, you can get working guns and props from the Metro game, including the pull string charger. Oh, now that is cool. Man, if I start collecting Metro props as well, I got to draw the line somewhere. Okay, I need to save a point for this, but I need to complete this challenge first. However, I did complete this one, and I should probably... No, I did complete this one, so I should probably get the next level so that I can work on getting to this. I now need to build 25 different outpost modules. That's going to be easy enough to blow through. I need to maximize outpost engineering, and I need to maximize planetary habitation if I'm going to continue with my outpost construction.
Okay. So, wait a minute. What explains the starborn ship? Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Because they're probably going to answer it later in the game. But my confusion now is what explains the starborn ship? If it's not of human origin, it clearly is of completely different design. No existing... What? Did I just crash to desktop? No, I did not. What caused... What caused Alan Wake to fly up there? It's clearly not created by any of the known um, starship manufacturers in the universe that we know of. What created this starship? Why do we see space in the cockpit? I've got so many questions. But to answer them, we need to continue with the plot. So, I believe we've uncovered everything on Earth that we can. Actually, actually, I take that back. There's one thing on Earth that we need to find. And I think now is going to be as good a time as any to get it. Let me see if I can find it. One second here. I need to look up the Leaning Tower of Pisa on a map. Because that's where it is in Italy, and that is a precise location. Okay, so there is one more landmark on Earth that we can go to, but we can't actually get marked on our map because there's no book in the universe that points us to it. It still exists. If we land at the right location on Earth, we can get there. Oh, and of course it's dark. Okay, let's fast travel to the ship and then wait for a few hours until it's daylight in Europe because we need to get to the Leaning Tower of Pizza, uh, Pisa. Oh. Always a satisfying moment to return to your ship. We've found everything except for Pisa. And uh, the problem is that since there's no book that marks it on our map, we have to be absolutely precise. Let's sleep for uh, 10 local hours, see if that brings us daylight. We have to be absolutely precise when we land. Like, we have to be pixel perfect. And if we don't get it right, then we just got to keep trying or resort to using console commands, which I might have to do. So I'm going to try and land there normally the first time. And if I don't, we'll use console commands. Last night was... Let's sleep for three more hours here. Need a bit more sunlight in order to get this to work. <sighs> Last night. Okay, so this is as far as I can zoom in on Italy. There's the boot. Ah, uh, this is as far as I can zoom in. So this is the problem with choosing <laughs> the pixel perfect. So there's the, that island. Pisa is right on the bend here. Uh, all right, tell you what. Let's quick save. Well. All that physical training seems to have paid off. Because I don't want to have to... I, I don't want to uh, pepper this landscape with a bunch of different landing locations. So let's quick save, and then let's see if we can get there. I'm looking at my map here, so that's the top of the island. If we go directly across, it should be right there. It's right on the coast. Starting landing procedure. 
What? Why is it dark? It was daylight when we zapped over here. Service, right, if, if I got it right, we should be able to see it. Another freaking starborn ship. No, I didn't get it right. It was a long shot. Is that it? It was a long shot. All right, so I need to use console commands to get there, which is a bummer that I have to use console commands. Uh, Altair the Haze says, please buy the Sarah Morgan dislike that shirt. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be great. All right, so I need to type this in absolutely correctly. Let's start by reloading my quick save. Then we type. C O W space one eight E four B four space zero space zero enter. Landing site's clear. All green here. Should bring us to the right location, but let's sleep until daylight. Why is it dark outside? What? So this is the landing site. I was close! This is what I chose over here, but we needed to go a little bit north. Huh. That's where we needed to go in order to find it. Okay, but according to this, it's daylight. Why is it dark outside? Let's sleep for a few more hours so that we can get some daylight. It's 7 in the morning local time. All right, let's sleep until 7, 8, 9, 10. I fear the Great Serpent himself may have needed to avert his eyes. Hello, Captain. Okay, if we did this correctly, we should see it off in the distance somewhere. Ah, there it is.
much sand. Ah, we're getting close. <laughs> Okay, there it is, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So extremely difficult to find this location without the use of console commands. As there is currently no book in the game that points us into this direction. As such, there's not gonna be a quest marker that shows us where the snow globe is. Uh, so I'm gonna have to just uh, look for it. Oh. There it is. Tower of Pisa snow globe. And with that, I complete my collection of snow globes in Starfield. Let's, whoops, let's go here, new items. Tower of Pisa Snow Globe. All right. One thing I noticed about the snow globes is no matter where you look, there's always something painted as a background on the glass, which wouldn't make any sense. Look, there's houses painted and a hillside behind the tower, but as we continue to spin it, there's always a hillside and something, and it's it's like that for every single snow globe. Which doesn't make sense because we're looking through the glass on one side and yet we see a scene painted on the glass on the other side. Okay, let's get my chat back up here so that I can see what I'm doing. James DeLong says, what's the cigar today? I got my master blends. Congratulations. Hope you enjoy it. Today I'm smoking a uh, Villager Cream. K-R-E-M-E. -E. Jade Amali says Mars Rover still ox. Oh, that's right. I still need to get the Mars Rover. Let me get a good shot. I'm going to need to stand on the hillside over here. As uh, chat says, I got everything on Earth, but I still need to find the Opportunity Rover on Mars. Let's go to Mars. Opportunity Rover, brand new location. Wade Speakerman says, if the Earth does experience a Starfield-like catastrophe, only three man-made structures would exist. The Great Pyramids, Mount Rushmore, and the Great Wall. Is that true? There's always a ship landing.
That is not a starborn ship. Let's go check it out. Hey, look at that. Opportunity snow globe. You have tour of old earth. You have seen sights on Earth, the Moon, and Mars that no one has seen collectively for over a hundred years. It has inspired you to make a spacesuit to commemorate your extensive exploration? What? What is that? Refined Old Earth Pack added. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not bad. Honestly, it's not bad. Better than anything I've got. Check. Almost better than anything I've got. I'll try it. Nearly better than anything I've got. Sure. So this is what the old Earth spacesuit... I mean, not really. Still, cool. We unlocked a really cool spacesuit. I didn't know that you got a reward for finding all of the snow globes. That's awesome. That is so cool. It just took off. Must be Crimson Fleet Pirates. What does your scanner reveal? What is that? That's a huge... Structure. Natural. Unknown. There's a natural thing on Mars? Natural. Wade Speakerman says cat uh, catastrophe experts said only large stone structures would survive any apocalypse. That does make sense. Dong Ho Choi says after checking out the human face statue next to UC Exchange at Sidonia, you can go to the actual human face spot on Mars to find a snow globe. You know what? Chat told me that in a previous broadcast, and I had been to that face statue in Sidonia, but it didn't mark anything on my map. I then went and tried to explore the face, and I couldn't find the snow globe. So I believe you, but I already tried looking for it and I couldn't find it. That's huge, what is that? All right, and then something landed over here.
Okay, that's the ship landing site. Way over there. But apparently we're getting close to a natural structure on Mars. We already know there's no, um... Flora or fauna on this planet, so it's got to be like a mineral deposit or something. Iron Meteorite. Storm Crater. Okay. I gotta see what's at the ship landing site. It's a random encounter and I am interested in them. Great, we're at the ship landing site. But the ship took off. It, it landed too far away for us to actually get to. that ship landing site okay well uh it must have dropped off some people i'm curious about this huge hulking structure off in the distance Looks like an an at at. <laughs> what is that? I wonder if it has any good story. Yeah, someone was just taking a nap on the surface of Mars because why not? Wow, it looks cool. I wish I could build a colony that looks like that. It looks like a giant home or something. 
I'm not seeing any cranes or drilling infrastructure or tanks or anything like that. It just looks like a, a abandoned research tower. Some sort of science facility. A rather unique design. I wonder if it is for show or serves some particular purpose. It is a unique design, which is what drew me here. There's a landing pad here, so we could land now that we've discovered it. Ah! <laughs> oh, it's booby trapped. Okay. Let's see if we can get inside. Well, Bethesda, what have you in store for us today? We could take the long way up, or we could take the elevator. Let's go the long way for now. Never know what we might pass along the way. Oh, dear God. Scientist. Always worth checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets. Spacers! Throwing there grenades are. over there. Andrea! Under fire! Damn it! Me, asshole. Alright, I'm gonna explore this first. Take your best shot. All right, give me a good story. I was really disappointed by the last uh, place we explored. The, the, there was a fracking station we went to, and there was just no story there. Halfway Nuts says, I just listened to the dog story at the start of the live stream. Funniest thing I've heard all year. I laughed so hard it hurt. Sorry it's been rough. <laughs> I'm glad my pain amuses you. I've had an awful morning, I tell you what. Watch out! The poor dog. I feel so sorry for him. I feel even sorrier for myself. I gotta clean it up. Andrea. Everyone run! Run! You're going down! Still shooting at me. Found you. You cannot beat me. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh. Oh. 
once again, we are triumphant. Yes, we are. Right, an abandoned research lab, and yet I'm finding very little research yet. See if there was anything down here that I missed. See, it goes here. Well, then where does this go? Because there was a downward path here. Oh, goodness. Oh, wow. I see. This is the staircase that we passed earlier. All right, so it's, so we could have gone through the vent to get up here more stealthily. All, none, none, all, all. Okay, so we could use that. We could use that. Well, I won't know. None. Now let's try using that. There. Because uh, it can only be used there. All. Oh, that's for the bottom. Right there. Okay, and that could be used there. So, sorted, sorted. Then we would need this here. Okay. So. Crap. Right. <sighs> we put that there. Nope. We put that there. No. I might have just ruined it for me. And that could go there, but then we have overlap there. Ah, great, and well, that gives us what we, what we need here. Oh, come on. Time to die. That's it? Lame. 
Best not to leave anything useful behind. Here we go. If there's gonna be lore, it would be in a room like this. Oh, come on. Show your face around here again. Nothing. So no access to that, because none of these terminals actually work. You're going stuck! Well, this is a big, huge, hulking place. And I'm really surprised that they don't have any holotapes. I mean, slates, no terminals, no notes. Let us hope whatever experiments were going on here are not running loose. Well, yeah, I mean, if we could learn about what experiments were going on here. It's so weird because Starfield does have really good stories interspersed between scenes like this where it's big and it's sprawling and it's a great set design but there's no story here <laughs> it's going down quiet did you hear that Need help I think you may be trying to take a little too much on. Literally. Okay, well we came in through here, right? No, we didn't. Star Roamer spacesuit. Nothing in there. Remote lab facilities are sometimes set up to engage in activities that are dangerous, illegal, or bold. Another secure access door, uh, but we can't open it. Art Pixel says, Happy Halloween, Ox. Have you been to Elos in Ixil system or to Kazal yet? Someone suggests pick up guns to get the ammo in them and drop them. All right. Art Pixel, I'm taking notes. Uh, Ixil system. Or Kazal? Alright, I have not been to either of those, but I've got them on my note sheet here. Oh, Pete's sake. It's like all of these randomly generated dungeons are just giving me an opportunity to play this mini game over and again. All right, so wait a minute. None, none, none. No. Wow, so we have to use these for the top. Well, I mean, at least it narrows things down. We could use that or that. So just, we can't use that for the bottom. We can't use that for the bottom. 
we have to use this for the bottom, which means we have to use this for the bottom, which means we have to use this for the top, and that for the top. Caution. Things in here may not react well to bullets. Sample you have vault. No idea what you're up against. Grenade in the air. <laughs> Did they have anything of value? Okay, well, we've got a sample vault. Let's see if we can find a way inside. Finally! Door control interface status closed. Let's open the door. That opens the sample vault. All right. Here's another terminal. More doors. Okay, let's open those doors. Okay, so it opened that door down there. Uh, let's see what's in the sample vault first. Hmm. Planet Hopefully there is Dana something of value console. here. Download collected planet data. Data for pelted fields downloaded? Pelted fields? This is a first. Pelted fields. Okay, <laughs> where's the pelted fields? It's in your notes, I believe, says chat. Okay. It's Callum Troy. Also Callum Troy. That was from the Dog Star Station. It's just something to sell, says Mark from Sales. Gotcha. We can always just grab things and evaluate them later.
Well, I think that's it. So all of this was just to get some uh, research data that we can sell later to who? The Pelted Fields is just part of a planetary survey. Okay, well, I'm not gonna waste any more time here. Let's go back to the ship. Ah. Yes? You need something? Did you need me to carry something for you? Uh-huh. Crap. I am here. Well, that was disappointing, but we still have plenty of quests. We've got final glimpses. Vladimir has given me locations he believes could hold artifacts, and we've got unearthed. I need to gather any remaining artifacts that Constellation has uncovered. Once I have them, the Starborn will be waiting at the Buried Temple. Taskmeister with a super chat says to find the face of Mars, the face on Mars snow globe, head southwest of Sidonia City to find the snow globe. Once you reach the left eye socket on the face of Mars. Yeah, we uh, we we tried that, and I'm not going to waste time doing that again. But I did follow those exact instructions, and I couldn't find it. I believe it's there. I don't believe that anyone's lying to me. I just tried looking for it, and I couldn't find it. And I'm not interested enough to try and find it again. Let's go. Let's start with going to Freya 2, or Freya 3. Satellite. Here we go. Something. How you doing, sweet pea? Well, I'm okay. I'll be quiet. But I'd be a lot better if... <laughs> Let me guess, you'd be a lot better if you had a bigger book allowance. <laughs> Entangled. Investigate the distress signal. I picked up a distress signal from a facility where the artifact should be. I need to investigate. You know me so well, Dad. So, what do you say? Hey, Mayday! This is easy to... Explosion! High energy research lab! Massive damage! Overrun! They're requesting emergency evac! Please! Alright, the message came from the satellite, but it likely came from the surface. The, center, the distress call came from the surface through the satellite. Nish, Nishina Research Station. Investigate the distress signal. Let's go. Landing site is good to go. Darth Luke says, uh, I love this mission. Enjoy the lore. Thank you, Darth Luke. All right, we've got a very nice looking planet here. Let's see. 
Uh, it's got a weak magnetosphere, standard oxygen atmosphere, however, temperate climate, not quite as much earth gravity, and flora and fauna, water, lead, argon, chlorine, copper, silver, benzene, and mercury. It's got water. Captain, greetings. Starborn. Great. Do you see anything useful? Random Grey Maid says inventory inventory dump box. Oh yeah, I need to dump my inventory. Alright, let's let's find the Nisha research station and then we can go back to the ship and then re-land on top of it so that Pack does jack all on a planet like this. Okay, this looks like a huge landing pad. You'd think I would have been able to land here. But no, I guess not. Okay, freight elevator, which I think is just going to take me up a floor. Nisha, Nishina. Cool. Okay, now that I've discovered it, I can fast travel to it. A1 security. Let's go back to the ship and let's dump our inventory.
Any adventure you can fly away from. Is, is that how the saying goes? If you need something, I've got... Resources, let's store all. Uh, let's take a look at Andrea's Sometimes inventory. I just want to turn off the grab drive so we can float around. Whoa. Kid. You, Where's you're, you? um... <laughs> you're I always enjoy these moments. What have you got for me? Okay, she has way too much crap on her inventory. That's the only spacesuit she has. She's got three packs. She'll keep that one. Let's grab those two. One helmet, two apparel. <laughs> you guys, uh, we're conflicted on that. We'll go ahead and take those. Oh, hold on. I have never been one to shy. Really? Weapons. When did she get these? She must have picked those up. Metalhead Madman says, who gives Dracula candy on Halloween? His fang club. Fang club. Thank you, Metalhead Madman. She's not wearing any of the equipment you give her. You have to equip it. She uh, says chat. All right. Space suit. Pack. Helmet. Take care of yourself. Okay. Basic boost pack. Basic boost pack. No boost pack, presumably. Let's go through my aid really quickly. See if I'm carrying anything heavy. Sort by weight. Notes. Just clean up my inventory a little bit. I need to keep that. Quest item, I should keep these digipics and artifact sign. All right, I have uh, reduced my inventory by a lot. Let's go back to the Nisha research station. Okay. Nisha research station, you speaking. What is your business here? What is this place? We are a research station run by the Hadron Consortium. Our work is proprietary and confidential. 
What's the Hadron Consortium? Great minds advancing basic research for the future of humanity. A bunch of scientists who pool their grant funding. <clears throat> um, I'm res responding to your distress signal. What? We haven't sent a distress signal? Nothing on the comms. No other ships in the system since our last supply drop. Look, what are you trying to pull here? You're sure no one here sent a distress signal? Yes, I am sure. If there was an emergency, I'd be the one sending it. Could it have been sent from somewhere else? Out here. We're the only ones on this planet. If someone had sent a distress signal, we'd have picked it up. It said there was an explosion in your high-energy research lab. Really? The high-energy research lab? Hmm. All right. I don't know what's going on here, but you should talk with the director. For security, I'm going to have to ask your friend to wait out there. Ah, oh, come What's on! Inside? Stay with me, and don't make any sudden moves. I'll get the door. Welcome to Nishina. It seems a strict policy, but in a way that is reassuring. Just they know what they are doing. Do not worry about me. Go ahead and go. Okay. Well, she liked that. All right, you stay there. Yes, I am human. I am not radioactive. Attention all. I am declaring a code yellow. All sections are now on lockdown. Senior staff, protocol Delta. Use up. There. Be right with you. Code yellow, huh? What exactly are they doing here? Ethan Hughes, Chief of Security. If you'll follow me, I'll show you to the director. Who's the director? Kaya Patel, our administrator and research director. 28 years in quantum particle physics, or so I'm told. It's beyond me. What's with all the security? We're a small research station in the middle of nowhere. Pirates eat places like these for lunch. It is my job to make sure that we are not on the menu. All right, let's go. We'll take the back way up. Main hall, but back way through storage. Okay. Here, you can see our lovely storage area. Don't touch anything. <laughs> this is our lovely so, storage. Uh, Nishina, it's beautiful. This is different. I was interested to learn about Nishina, but... Uh... <laughs> what just happened? Okay, well... First things first, let's pick locks. Because that's what we do in Starfield. We pick locks. Refined. Brown Neo City formal wear. All right, there's a platform. Oh, we're. Are we in the storage facility that we were? Is this the present or the past? Oh, the. What the? Easy, easy. What the hell was that? We could say some kind of anomaly. Could be the artifact I'm looking for. I, I don't know. I was here, but everything was destroyed. Or you tell me. What? One minute, you're following me, and then you're just gone. Minute later, you pop in out of nowhere, looking like you were in the middle of a fight. There was some scorpion thing right over there. In our storage room. I should have never let you inside. What is this? Some kind of stealth tick. Who are you working for? 
Uh, we can say, I don't know any more than you do. Or this is ridiculous. I'm not lying. Or if I had stealth tech, I wouldn't be arguing with you in a hallway. Look, I don't know what's going on. Let's get you to the director. Maybe she can figure this out. Yeah. What was that? Come on. This way. I'm bummed. There were a few more containers in that room that I wanted to loot. All right. Work room. Oh, here we go. Oh, novice lock. All right. Let's just focus on the pro. pro All right. I can see why you guys were excited about this mission. Huh? Who's there? Raphael. Oh, oh, thank God. Finally, someone came. The distress signal. You picked up the distress signal, right? Who are you? Raphael. Raphael Aguero. Chief engineer here. Well, I was. We can pass a medicine check to say starvation, dehydration. You're in bad shape. Yeah, yeah, I know. I wouldn't have made it much longer. It's been so long. I'm out of food, out of water, but I made it. I, wait, how did you get in here? What do you mean? I've been locked in here for days. It was all I could do to keep those, those things out. You're here, but you didn't open any of the doors. So either I'm hallucinating or, or. <clears throat> uh, we could say, I think I'm shifting from another Nishina to an intact one. Hughes was taking me to see the director and then I was just here. Hughes, Ethan Hughes, but he's dead. No. No, no, no. This doesn't make any sense. Unless... The accident. Maybe... Maybe this is a side effect of the accident. If the probe is still feeding power to the distortion, then... We could say probe, distortion, right. Tell me what the hell is going on here. We're slow down. Let's start with this accident. Right. Sorry. Three months ago. I was calibrating an experiment in our high-energy research lab. There was an accident. An explosion. It caused a gas leak. Sparked a fire. I was trapped in the control room. There was nothing I could do. They're... They're all dead. Describe this distortion. The lab was built around a xenolith with a dense metallic odd... Oh, come on! We should... Hey, I'm back! Wait, he's back. I'm back, sorry. All yep. right, we're on our way up. He was out. I was just filling in the director. Let's keep moving. You're taking this very well. If anything happens, the director's office is on the second floor, end of the hall. You can't miss it. Clell Big says, epic stash, loot it. Oh, is it really an epic stash? Locked with a novice lock? Clell Biggs, I think you're pulling my chain. Daniel says it's probably a good idea to be thorough in this quest. It might warrant its own lore video eventually. Thank you, Daniel. All right, I'll try to be as thorough as I can. All right, if that goes there, and that goes there, but that's overlap. Okay, yeah, that has to go there for the bottom. Which means I have to use that for the bottom. So if I use that, and then that, okay. Epic loot. Worthless. Pantry. Requires key. Coming. Thanks for waiting. 
Dining hall. Clinic and stairs. Can I go into the dining hall? A light particle fuse. Ooh, lacerate calibrated Varun star shard. Hey, hey, hey. My first legendary Varun weapon. Claw Big says, I met the guy's mustache. <laughs> oh, 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 his, his, his stash was an epic stash. Oh God. All right. I found a, I found a really cool. Let's see. Anti-personnel 10% damage against humans. Lacerate randomly applies a bleed effect to a target. Damn. Yeah. Well, we'll enjoy that. It requires key. Okay. Does it respawn with more loot? It does! This time with a disassembler refined rattler and a refined eon. And I can't go back in there. It's so slow. Dear God, it's slow. This is such an interesting concept. Ooh. Photo opportunity. I love this sort of thing. Dr. Brakova's journal. This slate contains Dr. Barakova's personal journal. Posted to a 180-day rotation, the doctor has loathed every hour spent treating headaches, paper cuts, and sore feelings after yet another inane scientific argument. A few entries catch your attention. Day 21, 14 hours 54 minutes. Mr. Hughes reported an emergency with the Particle Accelerator engineering team. Code Blue, full trauma kit on standby. Was it methane poisoning? A bite from some terrifying venomous life form? No. Evidently, Mr. McCarrick dropped a drill on his foot while assembling the containment housing. Minor bruising. Not even a sprain. Clearly we're dealing with dangerous, unknown phenomena here. Day 64, 0, uh, 0115. There's been an explosion on the research level. Full security lockdown. Alarms blaring. Hughes is trying to regain control. I am, of course, standing by. Day 64, 0280. <coughs> 0218, I should say. There's a hydrogen leak. The explosion must have ruptured the tanks on the research level. It's in the ventilation system. We can't contain it from up here. We can't evacuate because of the lockdown. Hughes is still trying to reset the system, or at least cut the air interchange, but it's going to take a few hours. If the levels rise much further, the entire facility could combust. There's something to be said for boring days, and this is the final entry. What a cool concept. I love this. Powerful, but really slow. Gonna make every shout shot count if I'm gonna use this sucker with no vats. Hey, uh, this way. I'm back. Uh, give me a second. Gotta backtrack now. <laughs> Any looter lore? Any additional looter lore? Atrium requires key. Clinic requires key. 
Where's the doctor? It's not there. Workroom, that's where I came from, and that's where I found the Varun pistol. See what I mean? This goes back to what I was talking about with the, the music. This soundtrack for Starfield has like 80 different beautiful songs, but I feel like when I actually play the game, I hear the same background music track over and over and over again. It really stood out to me when I was editing for lore videos, because the dialogue, the background music whenever I'm editing dialogue is the exact same song. I don't understand why they did that. I'll be right there, guy. I, I'm just, I'm getting my bearings here. Everything requires a key. Just wait for me, okay? I know I might zap out again, but I'm, I'm exploring. Director. Thank you, Ethan. Well, go on. Come in. Kaya Patel, research director. And this is our chief scientist, Maria Hughes. Ethan said you disappeared right in front of him. Twice now? Three times? Director, you can't be taking this seriously. Look, I don't know who you are or what you're doing here, but there has to be a rational explanation for all of this. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think is happening? What? You think we know? We have to start somewhere. Tell us what you've seen. Speculate. Give us something to build on. Mr. Virus says, Do you know if you've only got a mustache song? No, I've never heard it. Sounds like something I'd like, though. We could say, can it? I already know about your experiment. We could say, I'm shifting to an alternate universe or something. Or we could say, you found an artifact. You have no idea what you're dealing with. An artifact? You mean the source of the distortion? No, we don't. Enlighten us. We could say they're a key to the temples, the unity, creation itself. We could say they're connected to the multiverse, countless other realities. We could say, I've seen what they can do, it's why I'm here. Let's see if we can explain it to them by saying this. The multiverse? Other universes? You're right. This is well beyond anything we were prepared for. And you have some connection with them, then. Interesting. I wonder if that's why this is only affecting you. What did you think it was? We didn't know. That's why we were researching it. That is science, after all. This is only affecting me? So far, no one else has reported anything unusual. Either it's your prior exposure to these artifacts, or perhaps simply the fact that you're an outsider here. Whatever this is, I keep shifting to another universe. That is quite a claim. What makes you think that? Tell us about this other universe. <clears throat> well? Raphael said there was a gas fire. You're all dead. Raphael? Raphael died in the accident. He... Wait. Gas fire. Gas fire. The leak. Director, there was a hydrogen leak right after the accident. It was contained in a minute or two. But if it hadn't been, it could well have caused an explosion. Another universe, though. That's a lot to swallow. Raphael is dead? Presumed dead. The research level has been locked down since the accident. We still don't know exactly what happened. If he survived, he could have ended the lockdown. But... Is there some way to help him? You mean this other Raphael? 
No. How could we possibly do that? Raphael was a colleague and a friend. If there was some way to help him, I would. But it does seem unlikely. You said the gas leak was contained. How? We're not sure. Raphael was in the lab near the ventilation controls. He could have stopped it. Maybe he did. Or died trying. Tell me about the accident. This facility and the research level two kilometers beneath us were built to study a gravitational distortion. This artifact and the field it creates. Three months ago, our chief engineer, Raphael, was calibrating an experimental probe when something went wrong. We still don't know what happened. There was a series of explosions and somehow it's still running. That's all you're gonna tell me? That's all we know. Whatever happened, we're completely cut off from the research level. Data feed, network, physical access, everything. Raphael said the probe is feeding power into the distortion. That would make sense. That's why the field strength keeps increasing. We have a control unit for the probe. After the accident, I tried to use it to shut down the system, but the kill switch isn't responding. We could shut it off manually, but the entire research level is locked down. We can't even get down there. Project Journeyman says try to save both realities. I'll do my best. What's this research level? What you see here are just our living quarters. Most of this facility is deep underground. We have a particle accelerator and extensive research and development labs. Or we did. Locked down? You can't override your own security systems? Not from up here. The explosion fried the network circuits. Without physical access to the research level, there is little we can do. We have been working in makeshift labs for months. We could say, I don't care about any of this. I'm just here for the artifact. Or we could say, we have to find a way to stop this. How? I told you the research level's locked down. We can't even use the damn elevator. <clears throat> so it's hopeless then, we could say, or maybe I could in the other universe. Or I'm not leaving here without the artifact. Let's say maybe I could in the other universe. What? Clever. In this other universe, Raphael survived. He made it back from the lab. So clearly his elevator works. Take it. And you might be able to shut down the experiment. This is crazy. But first, we have to do something about your shifting. We could say, Maria, you mentioned a control unit earlier, or I'm open to suggestions. Maria, do any of the other controls still work? Could we adjust the particle sampling rate or the beam voltage? You can't be serious. We have no idea what we're doing. This thing is already tampering with space-time. If this gets any worse... It may also get worse if we do nothing. Right now, this seems to be our only path forward. <sighs> All right. It's worth a try. Then it sounds like we have a plan. Come All with right. me. The control unit is in the fabrication lab next door. Fabrication lab what next door. ourselves into? Master Lock. It's not red. <sighs> okay, top only. Check. Top and middle only. Top only. All right, if that goes there. Nope. Yes. But we've got overlap there. But it's the only place it can go. So that has to go there. And 
and that has to go there. So it's either that or that. Jeez. There. <clears throat> Spend an over slot, or an auto slot, and then we can put that there. Great. Top only. Which means, top only. Great. Now. Top only. Top only. Not so bad. Oh, and then the rest will be solved with just these. All right, so these are just private quarters, uh, but we're not getting a lot of lore. Yes, I saw the safe. I really don't want to pick another lock, so I'm just ignoring it for now. Ah, Director's Incident Report. Incident report, author Kaya Patel, director, date of incident, Revolution 8, day 64, time of incident, 50 minutes after midnight. Shortly after midnight, a series of explosions in the high energy research lab triggered a security lockdown. A brief release of hydrogen gas was detected in air inter uh, interchange system, along with particulates indicative of a major collapse or several dam severe damage to lab facilities. Chief of Security E. Hughes canceled the lockdown for the surface facility at 4.30, but all communication with the research level and its control systems has been lost. Chief Engineer R. Aguero is missing, presumed dead. Security logs indicate he was alone in the lab at the time of the incident. All other personnel are accounted for. No other injuries reported. Okay. <laughs> There's the director. That's great. And there's the door that I picked earlier. Can't get into the bathroom with the with the big crate. There's a big crate in this universe, right? Was there one in the other? That's still an advanced locked one. Director's incident report. I can get two copies of the same one. <laughs> okay, well, I looted it in both universes. Oh, she got fried at her desk. What is that?
surprisingly nimble little things. Okay, so that's the way I'm supposed to go. Was there another path over here, though? We came up this way, though. Yeah, we cleared that. Oh, it's blocked, right. Oh, oh, it's you. What happened? You disappeared and the ceiling caved in and, and... I thought I'd finally lost it. Are you all right? I'll manage. Look, can we just go? I met with the director. We have to shut down the probe. What? How? Look, if you think things are bad up here, the research level is even worse. I barely made it out, and that was months ago. I don't understand any of this. If I hadn't seen you disappear with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it. I... <sighs> Okay, okay. You're my ticket out of here. We'll do this your way. We can get out through the pantry. Here's the key. I'll back you up, I guess. Okay, Nashina pantry key card added. Right. Don't die, Raphael. I should probably quick save, just in case he gets killed or something. Super Taram says Ethan has a gun you can get via persuasion. Okay, well, when I get to that point, I'll do my best to get it. Crosmar says, was the incident report in the same, oh, the same in both universes? It was, I think. Yeah, see, I've got two copies of the same report. should just make a big site-wide announcement at this point. Letting them know that I'm going to be zipping in and out of existence throughout the entire facility. But I've got the pantry key, right? Oh, come on. I've got the pantry key. Why can't I unlock the pantry? Lame. Oh, look at all this awesome food. I love the food in the Starfield universe. I mean, some of it's gross, but some of it actually looks really good. Like that, Reuben sandwich. Oh man, it's making me hungry. All right, so that leads to the atrium. That leads to the hall. Also requires a key. We are being guided. Where is a key? No 
No lore in the cafeteria. Suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Hey! Keep it together. Keep it together. Uh, what will happen when I shut down the probe? I'm not sure. It might stop whatever's happening to you. It's a reasonable theory, I guess. Where are all these creatures coming from? They're a native species. We had an electric pulse field to keep them out. The fire took out the generators, damaged the foundation. They just keep coming. Can you tell me about the accident? I was in the lab, working on the frequency calibration for the probe. I was walking out of the control room when it happened. I heard the tanks rupture. The alarm sound. I only had a second to react. I jumped back into the control room. The door sealed. I was safe. From the gas. The fire. Everything. But I was trapped. There was nothing I could do to stop it. If I had gone the other way, maybe I could have made it to the ventilation controls. Killed the system. Even if it killed me. I don't know. I don't want to think about it. That's what the Raphael in the other universe did. Okay, well, back to the cafeteria. Leads to the atrium. Blocked, blocked. Well, the food is ruined, and this is the pantry we came through. Speak to Raphael. Vashina. <clears throat> oh. It'll probably advance the plot if we speak to him, so let me loot this room first. Security office computer. Security logs. Security log revolution day, uh, revolution eight day 64. <clears throat> Daily log open, security uh, chief Ethan Hughes on duty. Warning power surge, high energy research lab. Raphael is running some tests for Maria. Sus suppressed warning. Emergency class four, explosion detected in high energy research lab. Emergency lockdown active. Error, unable to connect to research level control system. Warning, hydrogen gas detected in air interchange. Warning, particulates detected in air interchange. Declared emergency, senior staff called. There's been some kind of explosion in the lab. The whole place is locked down. I'm dealing with the lockdown. Maria's looking into the experiment. The director's on the gas leak. leak. Dr. Barakova is standing by. No word from Raphael. Warning, hydrogen concentration approaching dangerous levels. Gas leak is bad. It's coming from the lab. We can't get down there to shut it off. Emergency class five. Warning, hydrogen concentration at dangerous levels. Warning, immediate evacuation recommended. Primary circuit to the research level is fried. Can't reconnect because I can't end the lockdown. Can't end the lockdown because I can't connect. Can't evac because of the lockdown. Can't shut down the air interchange. One spark and this whole place goes up like a tinderbox. Emergency class 10. The log ends. This is the most recent log entry. Archive files. Survey team report. Planet Freya 3, specific gravity, blah, 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 habitable temperature and atmosphere, local ecosystem complete, microflora and fauna. Analysis, this is a nightmare world. <clears throat> oh, sure, scans look nice. Breathable atmosphere, near-Earth gravity, habitable temps, and at the mid-latitudes, fully established ecosystem, maybe even some useful organics. Don't let it fool you, everything here is out to get you. 
The apex predators, Cataxi, are burrowing carnivores with near impenetrable shells and deadly venom. The herbivores are aggressive and wildly territorial. Local flora defends itself with some of the strongest psychotropics we've seen. Even the oceans are polluted with heavy metals and organic compounds that'll melt your skin if you aren't protected. If we have to set up a facility here, we need a high-end electric pulse field to keep the fauna at bay and a full-time doctor and security team on standby in case some idiot decides to go for a walk. Supplemental report Kataxi. Kataxi appear to be the native apex predators on Freya 3. Freya 3. Resembling large old earth scorpions, they are particularly noble for their highly I'm sorry, notable for their highly aggressive nature, incredible facility at burrowing, tough chitinous shells, and powerful venom. In the wild, Kataxi are ambush hunters, digging extensive warrens and using highly developed vibrational sensili to detect approaching prey and ambush it from the most opportune vantage. Initial scans suggest Kataxi colonies may extend as far as several kilometers beneath the surface, preying on other burrowing creatures in Freya's extensive cave networks. As Kataxi track their prey with vibrations, they are immune to flash-type grenades. However, a strong vibrational disruptive, like an electric pulse field, should be effective at keeping them at bay. Kataxi have evolved reinforced chitinous plating that makes them highly resistant to conventional impact and ballistic weapons. Initial confrontations suggest cryonics-based energy may be significantly more effective at repulsing them. When their ambush is insufficient, Kataxi rely on neurotoxic venom to fell larger prey. Resistant environmental suits and adequate medical supplies are essential for survival outside a secured perimeter. Kataxi should be considered extremely dangerous and are to be avoided if at all possible. Well, sadly, I don't think I have any cryogenic weapons at my disposal. Download survey data. Survey data of Freya 3 downloaded. Nice. Look at this. It's going to take hours to clear this out. Assuming the rest of the building doesn't come down on top of us. What now? This looks like a dead end. How should I know? You're the one who keeps winking in and out of existence. I just want to get out of here. Go do whatever you're going to do. I'll see if I can clear a path to the door. Okay, get to the lab. Here we go. <laughs> and now it's locked with an expert terminal, or an expert lock. I love how we just zapped into his, uh, his defenses here, and he's like, oh, whatever. Everything is locked. I am curious whether or not the exact same terminal entries are on this computer. So we're gonna hack it. Okay, top and bottom, top and bottom, top and bottom, top two, top and bottom, all three, top only. Top two, top only. Okay, if that's top only and that goes there and that's top only and that goes there, I can get both by doing that. Bingo. Von Rex says, make sure you, uh, to ask him for a weapon to fight these critters with. One of the best shoddies in the game. Thank you, Von Rex. Will do. Super Taram says, don't forget to ask Ethan about that gun. All right, thank you, Super Taram. I'm glad you guys are here to let me know. All right, so top only. Uh, there we go. Top and bottom. Bottom only. Top only. Which means that goes there. Right. Uh -huh. So this goes here. Ah, but we don't have a single. So this goes here. And that goes there. 
security logs. This is going to be very different. Raphael is running some tests for Maria. Suppressed warning. High energy research lab. Lockdown active. Unable to connect to research level control system. Warning. Hydrogen gas detected in air interchange. Particulates detected in air interchange. Declared emergency. Senior staff called. Alert hydrogen gas no longer detected in air interchange. There's been some kind of explosion in the lab. The whole place is locked down. I'm dealing with the lockdown. Maria's looking into the experiment. Dr. Barakova and the director are standing by. No word from Raphael. I've shut off the audible alarm. Director thinks the quote-unquote earthquakes are more explosions or whole sections of the research level caving in. Primary circuit to the research level is fried. Can't reconnect because I can't end the lockdown. Can't end the lockdown because I can't connect. I'm going to have to decouple the security system just to kill the lockdown up here. Cancelled lockdown for the surface facility. Everything up here looks good, but there's no way of telling what's happened on the research level. It's no use. Elevators locked out. If Raphael made it, he could end the lockdown from his end, but short of that, we're dead in the water until the consortium sends a drilling team. Director Patel declared the emergency over. Senior staff meeting just wrapped. <clears throat> wrapped. Raphael is presumed dead. We're going to set up makeshift labs up here and do the best we can until our relief arrives. It's going to be a long four months. Shift change. The log continues with routine business for the rest of the day. This folder contains security logs for hundreds of other days, stretching back at least four years. Fascinating that they took the time to make the security log for this particular day different compared to the one that we read on the other terminal. Archive files. Uh, here's the um, Nightmare World one and the Kataxi one. But interesting, there's no world survey data we can download, possibly because we've already downloaded it in the alternative universe. All right, quick save. Ethan. What? I... Oh, it's you. You realize you just popped into my locked office. So much for security protocols. Just open the doors, please. That seems to be happening a lot lately or I'm trying to get to the fabrication lab. Uh, sure. Down the hall. Take the stairs next to the atrium. Yeah, let me get the doors for you. And done. Is there anything else you need? Are there any scorpions native to this planet? Uh, yes. Kataxi. Nasty things. What can you tell me about the research level? Bigger than you'd expect. We've got a particle accelerator, whole lab complex, the high energy research lab. Real state of the art. Can't tell you what a tenth of it actually does. The director said the research level is locked down? That's right. Has been since the accident. We can't connect to the control system to override it. The whole system's on a hair trigger. Camera spot anyone not in the staff database. They fire off an alarm and all hell breaks loose. We can try to pass a persuade check to say I need something to fight the Kataxi in the other universe. The Kataxi in the other universe. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> I've got an experimental thing one of the engineers put together. But. Uh... But what? I'm trying to save your butts here. We could, uh... <laughs> well, well, this is difficult. This is a very difficult one. It's six, and we are not getting much. But thankfully, we have an auto-persuade banked. Hand it over now. Easy. We are just talking, right? Oh, okay. We could do the manipulation thing that we learned at Ryujin. Don't you realize that we're on the same side here? But I don't want to use that. So instead, we'll say, give me what I want or you'll never get rid of me, or I'm sure you can work something out. Oh my god, you're serious, aren't you? All right, yeah. It's never been field tested, but all yours. Experimental rare shotgun, the experimental A7. Okay. I mean, did you say shotgun? Tell me it's cryogenic. Experiment A7, rare shotgun. Does physical damage. Exterminator, 30% damage against aliens. Long barrel, laser sight, reflex sight, choke, 
tactical shot. Flechette rounds. High hair trigger. Fully automatic. Yes, please. I mean, it doesn't say anything about cryo. And according to what we read about the Kataxi, they're resistant against ballistic damage, which this does, using shotgun shells. And they're only weak against cryo, which this isn't. It doesn't have any cryo damage. But okay, we'll use it. It looks great. Any other lore here before we move on? Because as soon as I walk out that door, zap. <laughs> I think I'm going to be back in the other universe. Or no, it's going to be when I get to the other side of that hallway. Oh, an advanced lock. Bull crap. Top and bottom. Top and bottom. Bottom only. I'll wait until this later. Bottom only. Top and bottom. Top only. Okay. If we use that there. Nope. And then I could use that there. Okay. Could use that there. The problem is if I use this, it lands one in each one. So I'd have to... No, it doesn't work. It would have to be reversed. Great, so we got to use that there. Got to use that there. We, If we do that, we've got those three, but then we've got that top one that we could use there. These are all the same, but slightly reversed. Super Tram says, even the Kataxi are no match for these ballistics. Yeah, that's the vibe I'm getting. Okay, so we got to use that there, which means we're going to have to use... If we use that, we can't use any of the others. All right, this is ridiculous. All right, this is for the bottom only. This is for a stupid advanced lock thing. If we use that there... Then we gotta use. Uh, screw this. Alright, none. Bottom only. None. Both. Bottom only. Top. Alright, so if we put that there, we put that there. Easy. Bottom only. Put that there. Put that there. Finally. A calibrated Varun Star Shard. Okay. Alright, so this is the way we came in that leads to the exit. And this is the one door we didn't get to go through earlier. Irvin Chadwick says, Hello, Oxhorn. Just for the sake of lore, there is a way to save both universes, but it's tricky. All right, thank you. Howdy. Crap. Doggone it. I wanted to... I didn't realize this was going to trigger... I mean, we've been through all this before. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, we gotta trigger this again. <laughs> so we can't go back that way. If we do, we're gonna get zapped back. We've gotta go this way. 
to zap on the other side of this. If we go to the dining hall, it zaps us back. So we can't explore that way. Super Taram says, I would go a step further and say it was worth it. What, the advanced lock? Yeah, I suppose so. Lots of sealant. That's the adhesive that I need. Okay. O one. Let's see. Oh. Ooh. Like a freight train. Yeah. Advanced solstice, not worth it. Oh man, my flashlight is so nice. I don't have to worry about batteries like an Alan Wake too. <laughs> it's, it's you never know what you what you really are grateful for until it gets robbed from you in another game. White out, infantry alpha, red stick. Okay, those doors are bugged out, but we can go through here. Alright. No! Come on, I want to explore this in the other universe. <laughs> Come on. I can explore this room though, right? More sealant. Oh yeah, I'm getting all the adhesive today. Monopropellant. I feel like I'm in Dishonored. Remember in Dishonored 2 where we had a mission like this? Although they gave us a little shard that would let us view into the other universe at the same time, which was a really interesting game mechanic as well. This is giving me, um, it's reminiscent of that. It's really interesting. No! I'm still exploring this room. Come on, man. Foyer. Well, let me explore the room in the other universe. I don't want to have to keep going all the way back.
Really? I went all the way over here? I didn't though. I'm I'm exploring over here. Hello. It's so <laughs> Pardon me, it's so surreal. Cause we go from this uh bug infested universe and then we zap back here and this really mellow French horn is playing in the background and everyone's just chilling. Elevator foyer. All right, which one is gonna pop me back? God! God. That's right, I can't take the stairs up because it's blocked. So I have to go back a whole way around in order to get back to where I was. Fabrication lab. Speak to Maria. All right, well, I'm going to explore over here before I do that. Just to see if I can get any more lore. Suite 1, or Suite 2 and Suite 3, director's office. Can I explore these before I get... There's, we're back at the director's office. Oh. How? Zap me back, come on, don't zap <coughs> me. Please don't zap me back. But I don't remember this. Okay, well I think we have been here. I know, I would have opened these. No slates. Ah, credits. All right, they must have been closed. When I came back here earlier. Don't mind me, you just keep sleeping. Keep dreaming your sweet dreams. Okay, if I go back there, it'll zap me back, won't it? Right. Note to Maria. <clears throat> Maria, it's not your fault. I know how hard it is to lose a colleague, especially a friend like Raph. We may not be explorers or soldiers, but there is a measure of risk even in our line of work. He accepted that. We all did. There was nothing wrong with your test. And knowing Raphael, I'm quite sure he was deliberate and careful. Whatever happened, it was an accident. Take a few days off. Speak to Tati, if you need to, but don't let it eat at you, Kaya.
Maria's incident report. Maria Hughes, chief scientist, date of incident, revolution eight, day 64, time of incident, 58 minutes after midnight. At 2100 on day 63, I requested that Chief Engineer Rafael Aguero conduct an out-of-band frequency calibration test on the probe to to assess the interference pattern noted by the research team earlier in the day. Pursuant to that request, he was alone in the lab at the time of the incident. According to data gathered by the probe control unit, the calibration test triggered a catastrophic feedback loop that overloaded the lab's control system and caused a cascading series of failures, including the destruction of key failsafes. The explosion of volatile... St- Mike went dead, says chat. Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> I don't know how long that has been. I jostled the cord a little bit, my bad. Let me let me try going back here. The incident triggered an automated security lockdown on the research level. As the incident also destroyed our connection to the research level's control system, we've been unable to lift the lockdown or access the lab. Alt Grendel says, outside designated experimental parameters. All attempts to shut it down remotely have failed. What the? Chat is saying it's out again. It's not out again. I'm looking at it right now. I've got green on my little meter over there. It's fine. I accept full responsibility for the entire incident, including the loss of Mr. Aguero, the destruction of our facilities, and the irreparable damage to our research program. Okay. So she's in grief. She thinks it's all her fault. But it was an accident. Was it really all her fault? Okay, this goes to storage. Is this gonna zap us out? Please don't. I want to loot first. Yay! Can I explore this without getting zapped back? Are they going to punish me for exploring by making me navigate through a bug infested hallway? Okay. Hello. Okay. Hello. Workroom. Oh, okay. I went through here earlier with uh, Hughes. So Excuse I've, me. I've looted all of this already. Okay. Right. What? Did you get lost in the hallway? <laughs> it was blocked in the other universe. Uh, all right. This is the probe control unit. Most of these controls aren't responding. I'm going to very carefully adjust the settings I can. There's no way to tell what's about to happen. Pay attention and be ready for anything. Oh, great. I'll begin by adjusting the energy feed of the electron beam array. We're at 93 teravolts. Calibrating to 95. 97, 100. Ugh, nothing. Let's try the other way. 91, 89. What the? Okay, okay. It looks safe to approach. But what in the world? We recognize that. We recognize that from the other artifact it's a areas. Micro distortion. Flux pattern matches the distortion in the lab. The setting is just exposing it somehow. Hmm. Step into the distortion, please. 
083 says you need a new wire. There seems to be a short. Yeah. Yeah, I need to get a new cable. Is that safe? I don't know. <laughs> Is this what I've been passing through? It's possible. That's what I want to test. If that is what's happening, what does that mean? How many of these distortions are there? All around us, all this time, and we've never noticed. Alright! I could say you first, but she's not equipped, so... Alright. Stand in the distortion. <sighs> Nothing. <coughs> no, hold on. There's a slight pattern change. Some kind of resonance. All right, stay there. Let me turn the feedback up for a moment. Calibrating to 90, 91. Oh, God. Okay. Right. Aha, there's the probe control unit. So now I've got one. Recalibrate the distortion. Calibrate. What happened? Are you all right? You could have warned me, we can say. Uh, she did warn me. She said anything could happen, be ready. <laughs> so we can say it worked. So the lower setting causes the distortions to manifest, and the higher causes you to shift. That seems promising. Keep it on the lower setting until you want to shift, and you should be able to avoid any more accidents. I'd give you my control unit, but it looks like you already have one from the other universe. Love to take a look at that when this is all over. Do you want to test anything else? Uh, no. No, we still don't understand what we're dealing with here. If we found something that works, let's not press our luck. You may want to practice shifting just to make sure this works reliably. Closer to the distortion, conditions may be less stable, if that's possible. All right, time to shut this down. Right. If you can get down to the research level, you need to make your way to the high energy research lab. Disengage the power interlocks, then pull the emergency shutdown to stop the probe. That should finally put an end to all this. Oh, and before you go, the director wanted to speak with you. It okay. really is just down the hall. But when I do that, which universe is it going to trap me in? All right, how do I test it? How do I test the probe? Probe control unit. Can I equip it? I can't equip it. All right. Uh... Oh, they're all over the place now. Great. <laughs> well then, all set? If you need supplies, I've asked Dr. Barakova to take care of you. It's the least I can do after everything we've put you through. Before you go, there is one other thing we should discuss. If this experiment is the cause of your shifting, when you shut it down, the shifting will stop. What happens then? To you and to us. I'm gonna be stuck wherever I am. There's no way to know. You tell me. Or we can pass a research methods check to say it's Schrodinger's box to potential states. Exactly. And when you shut down the experiment, the probability function will collapse. You are the outside observer in the system. Whichever reality you are in at that moment is what will become real. For you and your universe, at least. The question is, which will you choose? Hmm... The cam says, remember, there is no useless information. That was the chem's first super chat.
What are you trying to tell me, my friend? Uh, can I ask some questions? Of course. What will happen to the other universe? I don't know. I'm not sure it's possible to know. It may cease to exist. It was one possible universe, but not what actually happened. We or Raphael actually did die months ago. Or it may remain real, just not in your universe. Or in some quantum sense, perhaps you make both choices and both outcomes will be real. Welcome to quantum mechanics. <laughs> well, what about everything outside Nishina? Nothing will change. Nothing can change. If the universe was other than it was, you would not be here to make this choice. What you choose will be what happened in your universe, the universe that brought you to this point. What do you think I should do? Hmm. If this were a choice between my life and Raphael's, I would ask you to save him. But as the director of the station, I am responsible for the lives of my staff. 30 people. People with families, careers, futures ahead of them. In this universe. Well, we still don't know if Raphael in this universe is dead. Sure, he's unresponsive, but we haven't been down there to check to see if he's okay in this universe yet. There's no other way? Not that I can see. All right. Have you reached a decision? We could say, I don't know. I'm going to choose you, this universe. I'm going to choose Raphael, his universe. He needs my help more. I mean, if I had to choose between those two, I'd choose this universe because there are more people alive here and I'd rather not devastate their families. But chat is giving me the impression that I can save both. So I'm going to say I don't know. You don't have to decide now. But when the time comes, please keep them in mind. Now, it's time you are going. With the network offline, we can't shut down the security system on the research level, so you can expect some resistance. Be careful. Ethan, unlock the elevator lobby, please. Ma'am, research level is still locked down. I'm aware of that. I... All right. Done. Good luck, dear. It's been a fascinating day. Optional, get supplies. Let's get supplies. Wow. Tatiana Barakova, station's doctor. This is not a public medical facility, but the director has ordered me to assist you nonetheless. I can spare a few med packs. Beyond that, I am not your therapist, your psychologist, or your cosmetologist. If there's anything else you need, ask. Wow. What's your problem? Excuse me? Perhaps you'd care to try a dead-end medical post on some godforsaken planet in the middle of nowhere, huh? Six-year surgical residency. And I spend my days treating paper cuts and hurt feelings for a bunch of mathematicians and physicists. <laughs> That's right. And now I have to deal with some spacer who thinks they're jumping between universes? Spare me. Well, we found her journal, and we can give it to her and say, I think you need to see this. My journal? Have you been in my quarters? Who do you think you are? The director may have given you run of this station, but I... Wait. Wait. What is this? This entry. It's mine, but... I didn't write this. And the scorch marks. God. I wouldn't mind an apology, Doctor. For now you believe me. Or I thought you might want to have it. Yes. 
Thank you. I can spare a few more supplies. Hey! And I'll give you a break on anything else you need. <clears throat> I need some help, Doc. Really? <sighs> Come on, after all of that... You're fine, trust me. I could use some medical supplies. I think I still have a few things I could spare. Okay, she's got etochrone, polstice, cocktail, paste, bandages, blah, 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 blah. She's got a lot. All right, but I think I'm good. Dong Ho Choi says, hell of a trolley problem. Lol, I apologize on behalf of the chat for spoiling the possibility so early in the quest. Yeah, it sounds like I was supposed to believe that I could only save one of them at this point. But apparently later, the ability to save both will become clear. Yet at this point, I don't know what that's going to entail. There it is. <laughs> I'm looting all your stuff, lady. tired of this. <laughs> all three. None. All. All. Middle one. Right there. Top two. Bottom and top. All three. If we put that there, then we're going to need something like this to go there. Let's risk it. Okay. If we put that there, no. If we put that there, yeah. Really? Whiskey? That's it? Oh, both of them are locked with an expert. Oh! <laughs> Steel 101 says, oh, come on, Oxy. They're not that hard. Stop crying. It's the time. It's 30 seconds to a full minute each time I got to unlock one of these doggone stinking things. And I'm just tired of it. 37 broadcasts. And I'm still doing this stupid thing. Okay, that goes there. a locker full of booze. That's it. She's got pills and booze. <laughs> I mean, I'm disappointed there's no loot, but I love the lore that the doctor is keeping behind two expert locked lockers 
a ton of whiskey and wine. <laughs> she is so miserable. Dr. Barakova's journal. Uh, this is the same thing we read, but in the alternate universe. So then, this is where we left off. There's been an explosion on the research level, full security lockdown, alarms blaring, Hughes is trying to regain control, I am of course standing by, and then this is the new entry. Dr. Patel ordered us to stand down at 0500 hours. We have one presumed fatality, Mr. Aguero, our chief engineer, was conducting a late night test when the explosion occurred. There was a brief release of hydrogen gas, quickly contained, no other injuries reported. The research level is still locked down. There's apparently no way to get down there short of an evacuation team. That kills the research schedule for the rest of the tour. I suggested sending a distress signal to see if we could be relieved early. The director shot it down. Four more months. Just four more months. Come on, where was it? Where was the other one that I used to zap back? It must have been in the other universe. Crap. Does that mean I'm gonna have to pick an advanced lock? Okay, let's get to that elevator. I just had to find out, didn't I? I just had to try it. And now I've got to hunt down the next one. There it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very calmly, she says, yes. Okay, this is gonna send us down. <clears throat> this is gonna send us to the other universe. But I wonder if he's still alive down there in this one. What happens if we go down first? I'm gonna do a hard save here. It's been a while since I've done a hard save. Let's go ahead and do a hard save. Ah! Okay, well, we don't have to pick it in this one. It's just a bunch of grenades. Okay. Get to the lab. Stop it. 
Right. I wonder if we're going to find him alive in the other universe. I mean, the explosion happened down here, too. So we got to get over there, but we can't because it's all blocked in. So we're going to have to zap over to the other universe. Oh, there's that over there. Let's get our bearings in this universe first. Secure access. What a cool mission this is. Security lockdown is active. Emergency override controls are available on designated security terminals. Override the lockdown in the facilities section. So it's still locked over here, but there's no cave in in this world, so we can go that way. All right, be right back. Quick bio break. I'll be right back, everybody. Hang tight. Okay. Thank you for your patience. I've got another Coke. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I swear, Coke should sponsor me at this point. Coke, if you're watching, sponsor me. I'll show your product all day. <laughs> Okay, so the quest log, the quest marker is wanting us to go over there. The door is locked with a master lock. When life gives you lemons, I don't know how to finish that. Loot a cred stick, I guess. <clears throat> but before we go over there... You can still hear me, right? Now you've got me worried that you can't hear me. Let's see what's down here. Particle accelerator. Your access. 
see what happens. So we still can't get over there. We can't get through there. And all of this is destroyed. God, what if what if we zap into a solid wall? Or zap into a bunch of destruction? Okay, so there's no point in doing this. Deezer's Lemonade, says Chad. Oh, when life gives you lemons, make Deezer's Lemonade. Aha! All right, I guess we gotta zap back. All right, so no way out this way. Now my big question is, <clears throat> what's on the other side of this door in this universe? Let's see if we have to pick it. Whoa! Oh, almost zapped right into a solid wall. Cigar is out of itself. Fire? Nisha Particle Lab key, ca uh, key card. Yes. Make me do the mini game now. I got the key card. Daniel says, I don't remember the context, but for your information to get the best quote unquote secret outcome, I believe you have to defy the quest objective at some point. <clears throat> okay, understood. Uh, we'll see when I get there. Systems. Massive damage. Interesting that we have them on both sides. Was I not able to go into the room on the other side? We'll try them both. A 
Okay, so that's gonna be the way we need to go. But let's see what happens. If we zap over from here first. Okay, it's the same thing. Why do we have two in the same spot? Then that wall got knocked down in the other universe. But it's connected through here, in this one. Right. I mean, it's an interesting shotgun. I'm gonna try this one. Okay, so we've got one disruption here in this room. We've got one in that room as well, but it's locked with a secure access. And this is locked with secure access, too. Hmm. Okay, so we have to zap over through there. But once we do... Uh. Okay, let's see what we missed by coming down the stairs. Knocked down. Advanced Grendel. Nothing in the weapon rack. Okay, let's see what's on the other side of this door in this universe. There's the advanced Grendel that was on the ground. But this one is a, a, a rare version. It's advanced locked. In this one. <laughs> it's advanced locked in this one. All right, if we put that there, then we need a three fur on the other side. Um, or we can put that there, or that there. We can get a two fur on that side. Both, both, top only, none, top only, none. All right, so we can't use both. I mean, we could if we put that there and put that there. <laughs> That's going to leave that there and that there. Tell grade Rio stat and credits. Okay, well, now we can't get out, so.
right? Wait. Are we going to even be able to get through this door? Well, we can't because it's blocked over in this universe. Well, this thing is going to pop open as soon as we zap over. All right, let's get it. Okay. Oh, but the door is locked in this universe. And it's blocked in the other one. All right, so presumably we're gonna need to use the terminal. To unblock it. Let's see if we can do that. Security system. Error, facility damage detected. Multiple system failures detected. Explosion in high energy research lab. Override lockdown facility section. That's going to open the door. Remote turret control. No signal. Remote robot control. No signal. Remote alarm control. Disarm. Security system. Override lockdown. Get to the lab. All right, so we've got one there. Particle accelerator down there. Let's see what's up here first in this universe. Oh, we've been here. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. Cool. And this was blocked in the other universe. A security so. lockdown is active. Emergency override controls are available on designated security terminals. Override the lockdown in the accelerator section. All right. So we're going to have to go into the accelerator section to do that. We already did that door. We're already on the other side of this. So we got to go here. Oh, we can't get back. Shoot. What? I am unable. Repair <laughs> not possible. AI. Catastrophic damage. I wonder how they saw me.
still something out here. Okay, it must be on the other side of a door. Okay, there's accelerator control. Navigator space helmet, bounty hunter, recon stim. Let's loot this room before we start zapping off anywhere. Okay, so we've got a lot of doors. Access tunnel. Accelerator mainframe. Utility closet. Really? Okay. We put that there. Well, we're not going to have that. So we got to put that there. Okay, they're not giving me what I need for that. If we put that there, and we put that there, then we're missing that one. But we needed those two in order to get there. If we put that there, we can use that. And that. Which means we're just missing that. But that doesn't work. Oh. Oh. Hello. Oh, this is the only way I would have been able to explore this section. Yeah, all of this is blocked off in the other universe. Interesting. Accelerator mainframe control. Okay, so that got me onto the other side of this door. Security system. Override lockdown, accelerator control room. Okay.
So I could have avoided most of the battle by going directly into that room and unlocking it. And then coming here to access that terminal. That should have everything done now. Okay, so let's find the next one. I think God. is that all of them? Jeez. I, I believe this is the one that I used. Or is it that one? Alright, let's see what happens. Okay, so that was that one. This is So these three all match up. That one, that one, and that one. All match up to corresponding ones in the other universe and open up into this big same area. This one, accelerator control, has one in it. Accelerator control room computer, security system, override lockdown, accelerator section. All right. Now we can get to the lab. But let's see where this puts us. Trippy quest, man. All right, so we need to go down that hallway in the other universe, but let's see what's down here in this one. Utility closet key card. All right. Calibrated mag shear, advanced tombstone.
robotics lab computer, there's another utility keycard. Master lock. Robotics lab computer, jeez. Anti-personnel, advanced pacifier. 200 physical damage. Anti-personnel. I think I have a pacifier. Two ten damage, but no legendary effects. Yeah, I'll take it. Steel 101 says, I made 50 Ruben sandwiches. I love this game. Rubens are the best. Okay, so this is top or bottom. Top two, top or bottom. Top only. So we use that, and we can use that. Hmm, so we have to use that, or that. If we do that, gonna leave that and then that remote alarm control disarm remote turret control no signal robot control uh, update friend foe, recalibrate, sure, why not? And activate units. Okay, so it's on my side, yay. Now, the staircase was busted in the other universe here, so let's hop up here and see if there's anything we can find. Okay, they're all on my side now. But only in this universe. I should say that universe. Oh, come on, give me the credits. There we go. Well, that passage was blocked on the other side. This leads to the exit. This is where I came. This is where I came.
What? Okay. So, we need to get into the access tunnel over there. We've got one entry point there. And this is the particle accelerator. Dear Lord, what happened to it in the other universe? Find out. Oh, well, the door is blocked, but there's a tunnel. Okay, guess we gotta go down the tunnel. Interesting. Steel101 says, ah, you like the Orion laser rifle. Good choice, man. Yeah, I switched to this when I ran out of ballistic ammo for my other hunter rifle, and I've just really enjoyed it. Okay, so we've got a portal over there, but then there's also this bridge up here. Let's see where this goes first. Ah, crap. Aw, oh, man. Okay, so there's one up here too. Let's try the one down there first. I think the one upstairs is the one we need to take. So these tunnels existed before the accident. Fascinating. I feel like I've just gone in a big circle. All right, that's what goes up to there. What was at the end of this? It's a dead end. Oh, that's what happened. Okay. Well, what's on the upper platform in this one? There's no connecting bridge. It doesn't lead to the facilities over there in this one. Okay, so what happens if I tag this? Back here. 
Right, well then that leaves only one option. As I thought, the one that's up here is the one that allows us to move forward. Interesting, there was no door in this wall in the other universe. Whoa! None of this was there when we did it in the other universe. What? Huh. Kiwis. No. Limes. Okay, so we popped in here. This is gonna zap us back. Oh, it just puts us back here. Great. Research lab computer. All right, we'll tag that research lab computer in just a second. in this room. No other key cards, no other terminals, no other lore. So let's grab the terminal. Ah, and it's just turret control. I've already disabled the turrets. Robot control. I've already destroyed the robots. Alarm control. Let's go ahead and disarm the alarm. Right. Here we go. for the queen she tried spitting something at me though she threw a ball at me a 
Okay, that's the only thing different so far. Well, wait, let me explore this room in this universe first to see if anything else is different before we go through that hole. Because it appears to me on the surface that that hole in the wall is the only thing that's different. Yeah, this was the entrance. Okay, we could zap back using that, but that's just gonna put us back in this room and we already explored it. So we need to go through that hole in the wall. Oh, this is new too. Wait, no, that's the same one. God, just getting all turned around here. Okay, through the hole. Oh, talks of water, right, I read about that. I read about that. Should be paying attention. Pay attention, Oxhorn. Warrior. 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 I love this gun. <laughs> Strange that we're not finding, um, We haven't found any sign of the other guy in the other universe. It's presumed he's dead, but there's a lot of infrastructure that still exists that hasn't been blown up in the other universe, so you'd think that we would find some sign of him? Fishkey says, Happy Halloween, man! You ever use the Revenant? I don't know what you mean by the Revenant. Is it a weapon in this game? I don't believe I have. Do I have it already? Okay, emergency. And we need to zap through there. Okay. Let's salute first. Before we zap out of existence here. You get it from Crix. Oh, yeah. That one. I, I have used it, but it blows, it blows through ammunition really fast. Which is why I'm not using it right now, because I, <laughs> I already used it and blew through all my ammunition. Controls are available on designated security terminals. Storage room security computer. Storage room computer. Do I bother hacking an expert lock just to turn off security? <laughs> sure, why not? I've been doing it all day. Might as well do it again. All right, bottom two, all three, all three, all three, all three, bottom two, all three, middle only, bottom only. Okay, so for middle only. We need a three fur. This. Okay, so we gotta save those for the middle. Bottom only. We need a four.
And that would do it. So those two for the bottom. These two for the middle. Which means I'm free to use all of these for the top. So I could use that. I could use that. And I could use that. Doggone it, I did it wrong! Or did I do it right? Yep. Robot control. Let's update friend foe, recalibrate, activate, turret, update friend foe, recalibrate, activate. Alarm, disarm. Storage room, security system, override lockdown. Okay. Okay. Yay! Please do not interfere with my tasks. Just reminding myself this is the control room we came through. I think we need to go that way. What was here? That's right, we came down here. Put us on the other side, I think. Is this a different one? go up. But then that means this is a different room. Which means I didn't explore it in the other universe. Which means I need to explore it here. Because that leads to the access tunnel, which I can't get to because it's blocked. Okay. <laughs> but I can do this. Okay, room looted in both universes. Up we go. Okay, we've got one here. Ah! 
Back on it. <laughs> I saw it moving around beneath me and it was coming up the stairs. One more. Two more. Super Tram says, I would hard save here. If interested, Rock Paper Shotgun has a very, very simple tutorial. Starfield Entangled Mission, how to save both universes. All right, I'm gonna do a hard save here as you suggested. Before I start reading uh, any articles, let me try and figure it out myself. Let's see what happens if we go into the other universe. Engage, power, interlock, or switch universes. Crap. Super Ram says, I was going to add, do it your own way first. Thank you, Super Ram. But hold on, I think I'm out of fuel here. Ah. Okay, so I'm thinking if I want to save both universes, instead of powering everything off in one universe, I need to like power some off in one and some off in another. Power interlock switch. Be advised that this is now a combat. God! I am unable. <laughs> Repair Come on. not possible. Heat <laughs> sick! What are you doing? Damage. Probably shouldn't be firing in here. God. Total system failure okay. target. Massive damage. I need to switch my powers. Dong Ho Choi says Raphael holds the key. Read everything he has. I will once I find him.
Okay, if I were Raphael, I would be in some sort of control room. That is some sort of control room. Which means he's somewhere in there, maybe. How do I get in there? Okay, that's where I came from in the other universe. That's a control room of some sort. So I need to zap to the other universe because that's likely how the door is going to be open. If I can find a portal that sends me over there. Ah! He's dead! Oh no! Probe calibration protocol. Ensure all power interlocks are engaged. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna have to take notes of this. On the lab control computer, initiate degaussing. Toggle the indicated power interlocks off, then back on to degauss. Verify all power interlocks have been successfully degaussed. Once all interlocks have been degaussed, initiate frequency calibration. This is like the ECS constant all over again. If the system has not been fully degaussed, this will fail. If it does, restart. If any interlock is disengaged, this procedure will abort. If it does, restart. Select the desired output frequency. Verify that the intake frequency is stable and meets experimental parameters. Activate the primary calibration control in front of the console. Oh, man. You're gonna want those notes on another screen. Yeah, you're right. All right, I'm gonna take notes here. Just hang tight, everybody. Pardon me. This is the key. All right, <clears throat> one. <laughs> Ensure power interlocks are engaged. Engage. Power interlocks. Two, lab control terminal, initiate degaussing. All right, lab control terminal degaussing. Three, toggle the indicated power interlocks off, then back on to degauss. All right, so I'm presuming that after I go to the lab control terminal, it'll tell me which power interlocks to degauss. So turn indicated power interlocks off, then on. Verify. Verify all degaussed. Once all interlocks have been degaussed, initiate frequency calibration. Okay. Initiate frequency calibration. If not degaussed, if not degaussed equals fail. If Interlock not disengaged equals abort. All right, select the desired output frequency. How do I know what my desired output frequency is? Select output frequency. Verify intake frequency is stable and meets, ex meets experimental parameters. Oh, dear God. Is it worth it? Should I just kill them all for the sake of simplicity? Verify intake frequency 
is stable and meets parameters. Finally, activate primary calibration control on control console. Where's my rum? I know it's the middle of the day, but I should be having rum for this. Right? Got it. Whoops. I somehow screwed up my own list here. There we go. One, engage power interlocks. I'm gonna do a quick save here. Do I have to? Wait, 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 wait. It says engage power interlocks. This says disengage. So I want it engaged. Okay, the instructions say to engage the power interlocks. These are all already engaged. So disengaging them would probably be bad. Let's see what they look like in the other universe. Okay, they're all already engaged. So let's go to the lab control terminal degaussing. Breaking things! Alright, I'm presuming that a lab control terminal is going to be up here somewhere. Alright, there's my portal to the next room. Great. Ah, oh, no! Master, get this! I mean, it's a master lock. Ooh, ooh. Oh, no, it's a shotgun. It's that slow shotgun. I don't want a slow shotgun. Even if it's legendary, I don't want it. Lab control computer. There we go. Calibration test. Raf, sorry for the late night test request. We finally dialed in the voltage this morning, but we've been having trouble calibrating the frequency waveform. Output sensors all look fine, but the intake sensors are showing some kind of phase shift interface, like we're picking up a reflection of our own beam within the distortion. Maybe a reflection from another universe. For tomorrow's test, we need an intake frequency of 34 gigahertz. There it is. Select output frequency. That's going to be 34 gigahertz. But I can't find an output that gets us there. I've left you a slate with the calibration protocol in the control room, but you'll probably have to experiment with it as usual. Good luck with this one. Oh. I put that on the output frequency. Oh. 
So we need to find the control room to find the other slate. All right, well, we'll start here. Degaussing, lab controls. Initializing, degaussing, frequency calibration, gravi gravatic analysis, and magnetic analysis. Initializ initialization, status complete, check. Degaussing, initiate degaussing. Ensure that they've all been engaged. Have they all been engaged though? I Did I check every single one? I didn't check every single one, did I? <laughs> I mean, if I initiate it before doing so. As far as I can tell, they're all already engaged. So let's go to degaussing. Initiate degaussing. The following power interlocks require degaussing. Six and seven. Turn indicated power interlocks off, then on. Okay, so these are the ones that need degaussing. Six and seven. How do I know which one is six and seven? Two. One. Four. Verify that they've been degaussed. Let's go back to lab controls, degaussing. Complete. Okay. Initiate frequency calibration. Warning, before initiating frequency calibration, ensure that all power interlocks have been engaged and degaussed. Check. Initiate frequency calibration. Frequency calibration controls are now available. Okay. <laughs> I need to get the intake frequency to 34 gigahertz. Intake waveform unstable. 
Select output frequency. I'm gonna quick save here, <laughs> so I don't have to do all of that again, just in case. All right, so if I have the output frequency at 34, but I need the intake frequency at 34, what do I do to get the intake frequency to 34? Do I bring it down to 24? 22? Okay. Okay. There we go. 34.5. 34.5. I mean, it's close, but it, it's not close enough, is it? It's 38. That's 48. Okay, so I've, I've always got a 0.5 gigahertz on the intake frequency. So that's the closest I'm going to get it. Verify intake frequency is stable and meets parameters. Inactive. Inactive. Activate primary calibrated control in control console. Okay, where's the control console? And do I have to do this in the other universe too? I think I do. But it's that point five that's bothering me. This one's a master lock too, but it's a completely different gun. Status complete. Degaussing. Initiate degaussing. One, two, and six. Lab controls degaussing. Status complete. Frequency calibration. Initiate frequency calibration. Frequency calibration controls are now available. Okay. So 
So that's what he did. He put output frequency to 34 instead of intake frequency. And that's what blew everything. So if we go to 26, oh, that brings us to 19.5. We can't get to 34. Going all the way to 40 gigahertz puts us at 33.5. Does that change anything? It does! We're now at 36. Changing the output frequency in one universe changes it in the other. How is that possible? How are the two universes connected? Hint, says Super Taram. Doomed world equals 24 hertz. Surviving world equals 40 hertz. For which universe, though? If we need to get the intake to 34, and by altering the, the output, in the other universe, it bumped up the intake to 36 in this universe, then we need to bring it down a bit. Let's go to 24. There you go. This one is now calibrated. 24 gigahertz output frequency, 34 gigahertz intake frequency, intake waveform stable in this universe. How is that possible? So I can save this universe. But I gotta figure out the other one. It's stable too. They're both stable. This one was at 40 and that one at 34. Okay. Verify intake frequency is stable. Stable. Activate primary calibration control in the control console. I guess it doesn't matter which universe we do it from, huh? Calibration test. This is the same one. 34 gigahertz. Ah. Director, he's coming around. Careful, dear. Slowly. How are you feeling? <clears throat> we could say, I don't understand. Raphael is here, or I did it. I finished the experiment. So you did? When the lockdown ended, we found you both out cold on the floor of the lab. <sighs> and then we found our Raphael. I still can't believe it. To me, you've all been dead for months. And then, just see this. It's a lot. It's really a lot. 
Why is Raphael here? We don't know. Raphael was the linchpin in all of this. He was the only one present at the time of the accident. His actions, the point of divergence. Perhaps whatever you did set up enough of a resonance to shift him through. This is impossible. But so is everything else that's happened here. Yeah, Raphael, you put the output to 34 instead of the input. Classic blunder. Rookie mistake. Raphael, do you want to go back? W what? Uh, no, no. There's nothing left for me there. This... This is a miracle. Everything worked out. In the end, I suppose it did. We're never going to be able to publish this. You're free to go. And to take the artifact. I think it is abundantly clear how little we still understand about it. For saving Raphael and our research facilities, I'd like to offer you compensation to the full extent of my authority. And as for hey. me... I've decided to take a leave of absence. After everything that's happened here, I need some time to think this over. But you ever need an engineer, just say the word. I owe you everything. Thank you. This has been a truly remarkable experience. Wait, does that mean that I can get him as a... Oh, he's standing over his own body. <laughs> He's been standing over his own body. Wait, does that mean that I can recruit him? The doctor wants to keep me a little longer, but I'll be on the next supply ship out of here. The next time you're in New Atlantis, look me up at the viewport. If you ever need an engineer or just want to talk, I'll be there. At the viewport? Maybe I don't want him as an engineer, though. Because he obviously... Can't do a very good job. <laughs> he messed things up for everybody here and caused this great cataclysm. Maybe he won't do it at my outpost. How are you doing? It's like I've woken up from a nightmare. But all this, this still feels like the dream to me. I saw their bodies, or what was left of them in my universe. To see them all alive here, now, it's hard. Really hard. What are you going to do now? I still have friends in New Atlantis. I'll stay with them until I'm back on my feet. After that, I'm not sure. Next time you're in the city, meet me at the viewport. It'd be great to have someone I can talk to. No one else will ever believe me. I could use an engineer. Are you still interested? I am, but not right now. Let me get back to New Atlantis, get some rest, and then... Yes. It's the least I can do. After all you've done for me. Sounds like a plan. Sweet, so I can recruit him. Cool. Oh, this is trippy. And there he lies, dead. How are they gonna... Like, they've got two Raphaels now. Do they bury him? Do they send him to his family before they send him to his family? Let's take a look at our loot. Incendiary Advanced Experimental... Nisha spacesuit. Uh, it's slightly better than what I have in terms of energy. It's way worse on EM. It's way worse on physical. It's better on radiation, but worse on airborne. Worse on thermal. And yet it has the Beast Hunter legendary effect, the Automatic legendary effect, and the Incendiary legendary effect. Ah, uh, let's equip it for now. Reactive Advanced Experimental Nishina Helmet. Way worse physical. Slightly better energy. A bit worse EM. Worse thermal. Better corrosive. The same radiation. Mass is better. But it's got the Beast Hunter Legendary Effect, the Reactive Legendary Effect, and Analyzer. Plus 10% damage to scan targets? Really? Well, let's go ahead and try it. And there it is, Artifact Lambda. I've got more artifacts to add.
This is impossible. I conducted the autopsy. Rafael Aguero died 92 days ago of primary blessed injuries sustained in the incident. I also conducted the physical. This other Rafael is suffering from dehydration, malnourishment, traumatic stress. But he should make a full recovery. I've run every genetic analysis at my disposal. They are identical. Absolutely identical. This really is Raphael from another universe. I did not need to deal with this today. <laughs> You're free to go. For my part, I'll be glad to forget this ever happened. <clears throat> right. And I guess the weird time thing is gone, because we can't zip and zap out of universes anymore. That leads to the atrium. Let's see if we can talk to what's her name. In the director's office. What can I do for you? What are you going to do now? I need to prepare my report for the consortium. After that, we'll begin analyzing the data we were able to collect from the probes. Perhaps we can learn something about these other universes. It could be the start of an entirely new field of research. You don't mind that I'm taking the artifact? That may be for the best. As much as I would like to study it, it's clearly far more dangerous than we anticipated. I'll be satisfied with whatever data we've been able to gather so far. That alone will take us years to process. So I didn't get a power from this artifact. Oh wait, no, they're different. The temples and the artifacts are not the same. What are you going to tell the consortium about the artifact? Nothing. When the incident was over, our mysterious distortion had regrettably vanished. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk with what's her name over here. All our research, and we had no idea. Do you still want my control unit? The one from the other universe? Yes, yes, of course. We'll be studying this for a long time. And we got 3,000 credits. What do you plan to do now? We'll recover what data we can from the probe. After that, we'll see. Have you learned anything about the artifact? Other than don't mess with it? No, not really. Whatever that thing is, it's beyond anything we've encountered before. Right. I guess to the ship. Unexplained disappearances lately? Good. Everything back to normal. Getting there. We're still trying to connect to the research level's control system. A lot of the circuits were just fried. And I think the engineers are going to be repairing robots for a while. Yeah, I destroyed quite a few of them. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that does it. What a fascinating little quest. That was a lot of fun. It was a brain teaser. And I'm bleeding. Doggone it, I'm bleeding. Why am I always suffering from some sort of ailment? That would fix it, but I think I've just got, there we go, bandages. Puncture wounds cured. Hooray. To the ship. We've got a couple of artifacts. I think we need to deposit them into our little um, armillary. Add artifacts. 
we go? You know, if they had different banter every single time, it would be one thing, but the same banter over and over again, dear God. All right, so he said he would be at the viewport. Where is the viewport? The spaceport? The viewport is the name of the bar at the spaceport. There's a bar at... Oh, right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now. You'll be scanned as you enter the city. The viewport. Well, hey there, Raphael. It's good to see you again. I was wondering if you were going to stop by. Thanks again for getting me back to New Atlantis. The viewport still makes their drinks just the way I remember. <clears throat> I know you can't see this because my face is in the way, but Raphael has Outpost Engineering 1, Starship Engineering 2, and Outpost Management 1. So he's clearly going to be good for one of my outposts. We could say I barely recognized you. You look a lot better than you did last time we spoke. I'm happy to see you're still in one piece. Or cheers. I'd be craving a drink too if I went through what you did. I've had more than one, believe me. And a good <laughs> meal too. I did wonders. I'm still a little shaky, but I'm doing much better than the last time we met. And my engineering skills are no worse for wear. Have you given any more thought to taking me on as an engineer for your crew? Are you sure you're up for a trip like this? I think so. I want to be. I felt so useless since I left Nishina, and I can't stand the thought of feeling like this forever. I think my only choice is to start over somewhere new, with a captain like yourself for company. How much Starship engineering experience do you have? I have plenty. My engineering course has covered starship systems. You might find a use for me at one of your outposts, too. I maintained a lot of the facilities at Nishina on my own, since I was the most experienced engineer there. Just don't leave me alone anywhere too remote, all right? I don't know if that'd be good for me. <laughs> I mean, I have a couple of outposts. Should I leave them behind? I think you'd be better off staying into Atlantis for a while, or it would be my pleasure. Welcome aboard. Are you serious? You'll really give me a chance? I wasn't expecting that. Thank you. I... I don't know what to say. Change Raphael's assignment to... The Kepler? Yes. You've reached the maximum number of crew. <laughs> Chad is saying I should get rid of Sam. Let's get rid of Sam. Unassign. Yes. Raphael... Let's assign him to the Kepler. All right. You have my word that you won't regret this. I'll do my best to live up to your expectations, Captain. Really. Activities talk with Sam. 
The moment I unassign him, I, I have to talk to him. I wouldn't complain about a new assignment. Oh yeah, you're still here. Sorry, I haven't got you assigned anywhere. <laughs> She's still hanging out at the viewport. Well, I wonder where Sam is. Pardon? I still have all of these guys to uh, to recruit. Well, there hey. we go. I'm gonna go ahead and do a hard save here. And that's all we have time for today. What a fun quest that was. It wasn't a side quest, it was part of the primary plot, uh, but they put a lot of work into that and it really pays off. It really shows um, how much thought went to what uh, that, that really fun adventure. Um, I had a blast, I hope you guys did too. We've got a lot more Starfield to cover before we're done with this game, so expect more Starfield broadcasts um, in the near future. <sighs> As for the rest of this week, my plan at the moment is to do a Baldur's Gate broadcast tomorrow. Then for Thursday, Scotch and Smoke Rings, we'll um, continue with Dead Space 3. And then I think I'm going to take Friday off because I have some lore videos to work on. And then I'll have those ready for you for the weekend. That's the plan there. Next week... I'm not sure, but I'll definitely let, let you know. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Alt Grendel with some emojis in a tip. Thank you very much, Alt Grendel. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you all again very soon with more lore videos and more live streams. Bye-bye yes. now. Yes, what? And my son Gavin says, Happy Halloween. I don't know if you heard him, but Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs>